Evans three point shot. It's 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 the following is a production of the Rough Rider Broadcast Team, a presentation of Watlington and Shires Productions. Northeast Texas Sports Network and Azalea Orthopedics present Northeast Texas Football, the 2023 season. Rider fans and welcome back to the, the ranch. I'm Chris Watlington. It's the last week of the season, which means it's senior night here at the ranch. And Mr. Payne, good to have you back. Thank you. Coach Meeks and his staff want to get everyone used to the term the ranch instead of Rough Rider Stadium. The ranch has a nice ring to it. Well, good evening, Mr. Watlington. And yeah, it does. Where else would the Rough Riders <laughs> hang out? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if this is the ranch, then our visitors tonight, the Brownsboro Bears have come from the den yeah. to finish their season. <laughs> and at four and five overall, they're one and four in district play. And well, regardless of the outcome tonight, this is their last game of the season, but it's not true of the Rough Riders at Waddington. It is not, and you're correct. This is just like Brownsboro, regardless of tonight's outcome, center's gonna be the third seed in the playoffs. And we know that we're playing the second seed from district seven, that's Gilmer. So how will the Rough Riders approach tonight? It's important to win because of momentum for the playoffs, but how long do you keep your starters in, risk injuries? Do you change the way you play because there's no playoff implication? Coach Meeks answered that question. No, oh, no, sir. We're still going at it. I mean, they're, they're turning the scoreboard on, so we're going to go play the game. Our job tonight is, is competing and beating Brownsboro. And, um, you know, if we were fortunate enough to get to a certain spot, then we'll look at some other things. But, but right now, our, our number one thought is beating Brownsboro and whatever we have to do to, to, to win the game tonight. Well, all right, Mr. Wallington. For the next 25 minutes, we're going to get everyone out there ready. We'll visit a bit longer with Coach Meeks in the JBA Financial Coach Talk segment. Gaddy's Medical Supply brings us with a visit with the cheerleaders Sydney Newworth and Cambry Bush. We'll talk to senior running back Caden Dixon in the center motor neutral zone. We'll get you ready for the game here in a couple of minutes. It's the Cornerstone Balance and Therapy pregame show on KDET 930 AM, or you can find us on YouTube with the Northeast Texas Sports Network. It's the Rough Riders, the Bears, live from Rough Riders State. I mean, I mean the ranch coming up next. There you go. Cornerstone Balance and Therapy is the local place where you go to recover after surgery or after an accident. With up-to-date modern equipment and a staff that cares and knows you by name, the only thing better is where it's located, right at the four-way stop in the middle of town. Cornerstone, helping you get better. Steve Tinkle at Center Tire Company knows time is money. And that's why when you pull into Center Tire Company, it's like a NASCAR pit stop. You tell them what you want and they're on it fast. Whether you need a set of new tires for your car or truck, a flat fix, or just a tire rotation, you won't have to wait long at Center Tire Company. Name brand tires you know, hometown folks you trust. If it has tires, either they've got it or they can get it at Center Tire Company, 880 Hearst Street in Center. 
Welcome back to the ranch, ladies and gentlemen. Stadium pregame show live from Rough Rider Stadium, live from the ranch where the Brownsboro Bears are in town. Now, if you are hearing something in the background or if you're watching our live stream, just to let you know what's going on, tonight is senior night, the night that they honor all the seniors of the football players and the band and the cheerleaders and the, everybody involved tonight. Tonight is senior night. And so you'll see seniors with their families walking across the track. You'll hear PA announcer Jason Locke in the background. And so that's what's going on, a pregame activity. It's senior night tonight. Speaking of team, we've got our Rough Rider radio team here in the press box, Mr. Chris Watlington and Mr. Stephen Shires. Welcome tonight, gentlemen. Hello. Howdy Hello. from the ranch. Howdy from the ranch, Counselor. <laughs> How's your week been? Oh, it's been great. Good, Very good. good. Wallington? I always look forward to Friday night, though. Wallington, I've had a great you week. and I both, I see a purple shirt. Yeah. But tonight, in addition to that, you and I both have a white long sleeve undershirt. And I'm not sure we're going to need it. I but, don't know either. But, but I think this that week. It's prudent. Yeah. 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 You told me it was going to be freezing cold and it was Wednesday. But yeah. I'm, I don't think it's going to be brutal tonight. We also have Zach Jepson and Keaton Watlington with us. They're primarily manning the camera, but they'll also have some microphone duties as we go through the night as well. And it's the last week we'll probably have them as they're branching off to cover playoff games for us. And so okay. it's been a good year to have them. We're going to let the little, the little birds fly it's out of the nest. <laughs> Counselor, as we always like to hear, how about your pregame brief tonight? Well, if it may please Mr. Payne, uh, Chris, you and I were just talking. I, I want to take this opportunity to do this. Some of our longtime listeners, yes. we want to give them a shout out and and you know and honor honor them. Some of those folks have been listening for since y'all been doing yeah. this stuff. Yeah, it's in the radio days when there was never even an idea that there'd be anything video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the first and foremost, there were so many to talk about. We're going to start with with Bobby Watson. Bobby Watson. I, I, <clears throat> I ran to Bobby at the post office the other day, and we got his phone out, and I I kind of showed him. How to get on? How to get on here? Yes. And then apparently he's got some further. Well, he watched it, it on his phone for two or three weeks, and then somebody in his family said, "You know, I think I can get that on your TV." And he went, "What? What? Yes." The Rough Riders on TV, and so the last four or five, he's watched on TV, and he looks forward to it, and I'm, and that's great. Yes, it's, it's a, he's just one of the number one fans. So a big shout out to Bobby. Big Watson. shout out. We also have the Porterfields. Yeah. Clint has been listening, and as soon as text machines were invented, he would text me things that yes. he thought were good. Yes. Or sometimes something we didn't know. I mean, he's been doing that since, I don't know, 20 years. Yes. And so it's, uh, it's always we get feedback from him, and it's yeah. always great. I'm glad. He's, and who else? we got some other folks that talk to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I get I get calls and, and texts from folks from out of town. Rick Wiedemann texted you rob one da of our old dallas right. connection yeah yep. and camp Uwani folks that yes. that, that know cool. that they're adam's family you know yep. the, the adam's family and and i guess it's the the, the sergeant yes uh gregory gregory yep. is a part of that extended yes. camp. so a lot of them tune in and they all they can't help but either pick on us or give us okay. give us love uh, one last one is my plumber really dennis liker plum crazy <laughs> he's always Watching and listening, and uh, and we he came out do work on a couple projects for me, and we ended up spending a bunch of time talking about the team and all this stuff, and and uh, he's a fan. He he he's a fan. Well, that's so, great. That's so, great. Uh, and, and again, we just have all the all folks, but we want to tell everybody and just again thank your friend Andy Provost at the University of Washington, Provost who, at Washington. who joined us for the. Uh, uh, the van game. It was yeah. it was great to have a true professional and, I mean, uh, that in there with us. People were like, I know y'all were kidding about that airplane, but he went and caught a plane to Washington. So yes, yeah, he, he did. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And 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 I know I'm no, it's bucking into your brief. Oh no, absolutely. You're you're the expert witness in this. <laughs> okay, we have last week. Uh, by the time. Oh, five, four or five days had passed after the game. We had almost 2,000 folks that had viewed it. So there's a lot of new folks watching, yes, but yep. there are there's a, that original We, we have our original folks radio days that have gone have from them. radio to, to uh, Facebook Live to Twitch. Twitch and to YouTube. So we yeah. thank everybody. We thank all the folks that have been with us for all these years. And we also really appreciate all the new folks that are coming Very on. Very much. Get everybody to come on and watch. So, so with that, mm -hmm. Mr. Payne, the defense will rest. <laughs> An excellent pregame brief. It's always great to mention folks, and we thank our 
everyone that listens and, and, and remember, too, we thank our sponsors that make it possible. Absolutely. And, and yes. if you ever shop with those folks or when you shop with them, be sure and mention thank you for sponsoring yes. Rough Rider Football. Yes. yes, that would help a lot. Yep, yep, yep. That's a good thing to do. Well, thank you very much, Counselor. Now, Wallington, you know Tammy Steptoe has been a sponsor of Rough Rider Football for a long, long time. And those steps to the sidelines? Yes. Yes. Great information from the sidelines, and, and we appreciate. And honestly, there are fewer steps to the sideline now because our new technology, as nice as it is, one of the hardest parts is getting good audio through the video. And so we from the sideline, right? Where we used to could do that a lot easier, and you think, well, advances in technology, you could do that easier. And unfortunately, that's one of the harder things yep. to replicate. But yep. we will but eventually get there. We're working yep. on that, but but Tammy <clears throat> Steptoe. Normally, we would go to the sideline for this injury report. Yeah. And I'm up in the press box. As far as we know, there is one injury that will be with us the rest of the year. Alan Cortez is not going to, to play anymore. He's a senior, and that's I, I hate that. He's hurt his knee. But as far as I know, everyone else is suited up and ready. Excellent. That's well, brought to you by Hope Medical, by the way. And looking forward to a good game tonight. Well, folks, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our cheerleader spotlight. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. At Hope Community Medicine, they believe that more than medicine is needed when providing quality care for their patients. With locations throughout East Texas, the vision is to give hope to those who seek a better life by caring for their body, mind, and soul, and not about their ability to pay. Through the network of staff and locations, Hope seeks to be primary provider of medical, dental, and behavioral health. Because the difference that Hope makes is the difference between night and day. Hope Community Health. Tammy Step to is where realty becomes reality. How do you know? Every time there has been a reader's favorite contest of the Light and Champion, they've won it. Whether it's your modest home you're looking for, or maybe a slightly less modest home, or your dream home, Tammy Steptoe has it. Or maybe it's a lakeside getaway or property to start all over. You need to trust the ladies at Tammy Steptoe Realty and Center. Shelby Veterinary Associates and Center understands that your pet's health is important and they take every step to give your pet the best care. From preventative wellness exams to vaccinations, heartworm tests, and flea and tick pills. Ask Dr. Mark Jason about the benefits of dental care for your pets to prevent infections and bad breath. Also offering a heartworm injection that prevents heartworms and lasts for 12 months. Shelby Veterinary Associates, treating your pets like the valued family members they are. Now carrying Semperica Trio. Everybody, welcome back to the Cornerstone Balance and Therapy pregame show. Chris Wallington called an audible. We're, we don't yet going to have a cheerleader up here, so we're going to go ahead and go to our neutral zone where he sat down and visited with Caden Dixon. Isn't that right, Chris Wallington? That's correct. So here it is, the neutral zone with Caden Dixon. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing good. People are going to see this at pregame before Brownsboro. So you have nine games behind you. I want to ask you, what was the high point of the season so far? Uh, Probably Carthage game. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Getting into it. Yes, sir. What was the low point? Uh, Probably the man game. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So looking forward now to playoffs. How does that change the way the team approaches things, or does it? Uh, just got to play harder. Play harder, probably practice a little bit harder too. Yes, what are you thinking about once this year is over and you look towards your own future? Is are you going to hope to play ball somewhere? Yes, sir. Going off to college. Just give me one. One if you are of the all of them that you got, the one you'd most like to go to. Uh, probably Arizona. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, nice and nice and warm. Cold. <laughs> Is it really? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I have, and you're dressed for it, so you, you have everything you need. Well, good luck with that, and good luck with the rest of the season. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thought you'd seen the last of the Ford Bronco. 
Well, you were wrong. Ford brought the Bronco back so they could put the S in SUV. Comfort and connectivity for the highway to get you there. And then the power you need for your off-road adventure. Run at the front of the herd. Saddle up a Bronco at Center Motor Company. The Cornerstone pregame show brought to you in part by Rough Rider Quick Lube and Bob's Pawn Shop. Come check the score of the game while you shop. Shelby Veterinary Associates, your pet is part of your family. And Center Tire Company, it's too important to leave to anyone else. Everybody, welcome back to the Cornerstone Balance and Therapy pregame show. It's time. It would not be a Rough Rider broadcast and certainly not a Rough Rider football broadcast if we did not have the cheerleader spotlight. It was one of my favorite things to do yeah. when I took the Tammy step toe, step down to the sideline. But right. we're doing it up here. We are we are lucky enough to have a young lady with us who's also going to be doing our moment of silence this evening. Uh, so we're going to turn it over to Chris Wallington with our Gaddy's Medical Supply cheerleader spotlight here tonight. That's her right there <laughs> in the press box. Sydney, how are you? I'm great. How are you? You miss being my neighbor. I miss it so yeah. much. We, we, she was our cross street neighbor for about four years. A long time. Long I, time. I miss playing in that tree. <laughs> That's right. I sure do. <laughs> it's so big now. You and your whole, uh, the whole cheerleading squad. <laughs> so you're cheerleading this year have you done that ever since seventh grade i have done it ever since seventh grade except i took a year off in eighth grade and danced oh, okay. but i came back and cheered because i realized it's what i love to do did you enjoy the dance you're okay yeah it was okay i mean it's okay but dance is just not for me okay yeah but you guys danced today at the pep rally it was a good show thank you i loved it i feel like it was one of our better pep rallies for sure okay there we've had five yes and two or three of them have had special this is and that yes what was your favorite one um, definitely step on them. Like the guy that sang. Oh, know? yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, the, it was the Carthage one. Yes, yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. it was, he came in and he, he wrote a rap and he performed it. Yes, he yeah, did. And I thought it was really, like, cool because all the students got into it yeah. and it was really involved. They, it was crunk. Yes. What is oh. the, what's the word now? Lit. It was no, lit. No, no. I don't really know. It's, it's not crunk and it's not lit. It's not crunk and it's not lit. It's not hype. Mm. No. It was very good. It was very, very good. <laughs> okay. Now, you are about to do the moment of silence, which I means am. basically you're going to lead the prayer. Yes. And I heard you say it's an emotional one for you. It is an emotional one for me. Um, so, my I cheer with the seniors, mm -hmm. obviously, and I've cheered with them since seventh grade. So, it's just really sad that they're, like, leaving. And, okay. You know? But this is me next year. And then yeah. my friend Anna Marie, her brother Carter, passed away so uh -huh. he wasn't able to be here with us today and then Lexi as well so it's just like very emotional yeah. for sure this is where you kind of take stock of those yeah. things yeah. yeah you're very thankful for the situations that you're in well Sydney you are welcome to be our cheerleader interview anytime yeah all right that's thank a, you maybe you come up and be she could take my job yeah. <laughs> that's that's one of the top five interviews of all time I would say Do, right that's a good one. Okay, well, thank you. We look forward to hearing your prayer, and thank you for coming up All and right. joining us. We'll hear from Gaddy's Medical Supply, who brings us our cheerleader spotlight, and the Cornerstone pregame show will continue. Gaddy's Medical Supply is your one-stop shop for all your medical supply needs. Uh, Jack Allen, where's my ankle wrap stuff from my sore ankle? Your ankle wrap or your Kinesio wrap? Uh, the old guy wrap. Ah, the ankle wrap. It's in the top bathroom drawer. Okay, thanks. If you are recovering from an illness or an injury, Gaddy's Medical Supply can offer you the support you'll need. Scarlett Jack Allen? Yeah? Where did I put the raised toilet seat? Check behind the door? Right. From crutches yeah. to canes to chairs, Gaddy's Medical is there for you. Or you Behind can which door? door to, the to hall bathroom. Oh, okay. 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 Take care of yourself or with job. someone you love with Gaddy's Medical They're Supply. They're coming up now. And Rough Rider Oil and Lube, they understand two very important things. First, you and your family spend a lot of time in your vehicle, so you need to take good care of that vehicle so it can take care of you. That's the specialty of Rough Rider Oil and Lube, protecting the engine that gets you where you need to go. Second, Rough Rider fans, they deserve the very best, so you're always welcome at Rough Rider Oil and Lube. Shelby Veterinary Associates and Center understands that your pet's health is important and they take every step to give your pet the best care. From preventative wellness exams to vaccinations, heartworm tests, and flea and tick pills. Ask Dr. Mark Jasson about the benefits of dental care for your pets to prevent infections and bad breath. Also offering a heartworm injection that prevents heartworms and lasts for 12 months. 
Shelby Veterinary Associates, treating your pets like the valued family members they are. Now carrying Simperica Trio. Cornerstone Balance and Therapy is the local place where you go to recover after surgery or after an accident. With up-to-date modern equipment and a staff that cares and knows you by name, the only thing better is where it's located, right at the four-way stop in the middle of town. Cornerstone, helping you get better. Everybody, welcome back to the Cornerstone Balance and Therapy pregame show. It is time for uh, us to do our area roundup and also our talk about our batter scoreboard that we'll be doing this evening and i believe we're going to have keaton wallington manning the batter scoreboard this evening good evening uh, how are you this evening keaton? oh i'm good i'm good thanks for having me today it's oh, just man, it's such a great. great atmosphere out here all the seniors are walking by you know i have this uh, electrically controlled blimp um, and I'm able to look at the camera from the very yeah. top of the blimp, and I'm just nice. seeing all of it. It looks amazing. Right. I'm going to start with the smaller schools that have already got underway in the, in the county. Shelbyville Dragons going against the West Sabine Tigers. First quarter, five minutes left. That score, 8-0 in favor of the Tigers. Overton versus Tinnahaw. Tinnahaw leads 7-0 with 10 minutes left in the first quarter. The Timpson Bears and the Garrison Bulldogs tied at zero with five minutes left. And the San Augustine Wolves going against the Grapeland Sandys. They're down 7-14, to 14, first quarter almost over. Oh. We're going to bring you a couple of more games, something to look forward to as the night continues. We've got the Canton Eagles versus the Rusk Eagles, the Pittsburgh Pirates versus the Gilmer Buckeyes. We're going to just kind of keep that one in our radar because we'll be playing Gilmer next. And the last district matchup we'll be following today is the Bullard Panthers versus the Van Vandals. The Carthage Bulldogs are at home. Thanks for having me, guys. Very good. You know, the big game of the – of the weekend in East Texas is the Timpson versus Garrison game. They Big call game. that they call it the Battle of the Atoyac. Yep. And uh and you know and for many 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 years Garrison just dominated that. But I'm telling you what Timpson is getting is getting their vengeance right now. But it, but tonight it's 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 apples versus apples because both those teams are excellent football teams. I'll see if I can get the blimp over to the Atoyac. Get a Do little that. bit of that. Yeah, let me let me just see how the what the range is on the blimp first. And of course, that's our batter score brought to you by Batters Law Firm. If your case matters, better call Batters. We also have our area roundup that Chris Wallington does every week, where he kind of sets the stage of what's going on, and not only in our district but also in the area, including the county schools that Keaton has already talked about. So. This is this week's Week 10 Area Roundup. Campbell Portable Buildings presents the Area Roundup, a look at the teams in Centers District and in Shelby County. We begin with Centers District, District 8. Well, we begin with the unbeaten and seemingly unbeatable Carthage Bulldogs. For the last six and a half years, they're 71 and 0. On their bye week tonight, they look down at the rest of us as champions yet again. The number two team, the Van Vandals, are only one district loss. Last week, Carthage was supposed to win by 21. Guess what? They won by 21. Van's opponent tonight, the Bullard Panthers. Here's the way it looks. If Bullard were to win, well, then maybe they could get in if they looked at point differentials. But Van is the number two seed, regardless of what happens, and Van's heavy favorite at home. All right, the Battle of the Eagles. Canton Eagles are one and four. They did beat Brownsboro and keep their season alive. The Rusk Eagles are two and three in district. They lost to the district's big brothers, uh, Carthage, Van, and Center, but they beat Bullard, and then they beat the Brownsboro Bears. So there's their two wins. In the matchup, if Canton could win, well, maybe if the point differentials would work, they would earn the playoffs. If Rusk wins, they will be the fourth seed, and they're picked by 13. In tonight's game in center, center is 28-point favorites over the Brownsboro Bears. Now we move to the teams in and around Shelby County, 2A District 1, the big showdown, Garrison versus Timpson. As good as Garrison is, number six in the state, Timpson's picked by 21. Then Shelbyville, they're already in the playoffs. They play West Sabine tonight, but if they were to lose, it would certainly affect the Joaquin Rams. San Augustine's playing Grapeland, picked by 11. If San Augustine and Shelbyville wins, one of these two teams will be the last playoff seed. We'll have to do the math to see. Now, Tenahaw tonight is in the district championship game against Overton, and they are six-point favorites to win that district. 
And that's your area roundup brought to you by Campbell's Portable Buildings, because your building matters. All right, everybody, so that was our area roundup brought to you by Campbell's Portable Builders. We'll hear from Campbell's in a moment, but before we do that, Chris Wallington has a special salutation to give out. I want to give a shout-out to the Longview Spring Hill Panthers. We played them in week two, I think, and they were the num- they were the last place team in the state. They were just dead last, and we, we beat them, but they played well. Yeah. And I, none of us thought, surely there are worse teams than that. Well, in the – in the meantime, they won some games, and they have clinched the third seed in the playoffs. Now, that's where we are. We are right. a better team, but in their district, they're the third seed. We're the third right. seed. They have really come a long yeah. way. They used to be in our district, and I, I wanted to just kind of give them a thumbs up. Right, and they got some nice folks over there. We deal yeah. with them when, you know, when we were going good. to do the game over there. Good people. So, congratulations, and, and very good. Yes, we looked at that team. We said, no way. No way. No way. Just like Jackie Gleason and Smoking and Bandit. <laughs> no way was that team <laughs> the, the, the worst team in the state of I Texas. I did not think about and because Jackie Gleason. They just played, they played so well and uh, so disciplined. And yeah. uh, congratulations to them. We're happy, happy to hear that. So, folks, that's uh, that's that. Thank you, Mr. Wallington. We'll hear from Campbell's Portable Buildings with a couple other commercials, and we'll be back as we get ready to do our coach talk. It's one of the great slogans, right? Just tell them James sent you. But when James Campbell sent you away from Campbell Portable Buildings, he wanted it to be something that met your needs. Whether it was storage or some inside beautiful living area, they can take care of you at Campbell Portable Buildings, where your building matters. They say, go Riders. Tinkle at Center Tire Company knows time is money. And that's why when you pull into Center Tire Company, it's like a NASCAR pit stop. You tell them what you want and they're on it fast. Whether you need a set of new tires for your car or truck, a flat fix, or just a tire rotation, you won't have to wait long at Center Tire Company. Name brand tires you know, hometown folks you trust. If it has tires, either they've got it or they can get it at Center Tire Company, 880 Hurst Street in Center. There's lots of things happening at Zach's Tent Shop. Like tent your windows. It's one of the simplest yeah, things you can do to your vehicle, rims, but it makes a big, dramatic difference. Ain't nothing marks your style like a custom rims, lift or a drop. They got night bars and grills and running boards. And I just, man, they got all the best rims and all the best brands. Want to take care of your truck? You take it to Zach's Tent Shop. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cornerstone balance and therapy pregame show it's time for our jba financial coach talk where chris walton sit down and talk to coach about i guess about you know what this game means and what he wants to get out of it and kind of what we're going to be trying to do uh, i'm going to tell you straight up we did not sit down oh we just stand yeah, up i stood up and talked to him all right all right so you stood up <laughs> and talked to coach all right so here we go Coach, thanks for the time. We decided to change locations. You just got through with practice on Thursday. It's cold outside. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels good. Do you prefer it like this? Is this football weather to you? It is to me, you know. I, I, but I'm kind of more lenient to whatever the kids do. I think they don't they yeah. don't enjoy it as much. So right. It's all to a set of uh, problems with them. To my surprise, I understand that this game, as far as playoff seating goes, does it have little or no consequence? Yeah, it doesn't. Um, no, no matter the outcome, I mean, it's we're going to be the third seed. Um, the district we match up with is set as well in terms of first and second. So, yeah. you know, our, our matchup is set. Well, we have people somehow at Gilmer's game today watching them, or is it, is it all hands on deck for Brownsboro? Well, it's all hands on deck for Brownsboro. Uh, you know, we, we talked to the kids a little bit this week. Um, about the significance of the game still, and it's more from a historical standpoint. You know, but we have an opportunity tonight to um, uh, do something that hasn't been done in 26 years, and that's back-to-back seven-plus-one seasons. And um, you know, so 
So we're solely focused on Brownsboro. Uh, we'll worry about Gilmer this weekend and getting ready for the first round game. I think also historically, you win the last game of the season, you're way more likely to win the first playoff game. Absolutely, and that's the other thing. We need we need to go into the go into the to the postseason with two straight wins and, and you know executing well and, and doing things that we need to be doing, and that's that definitely plays a difference as we get ready next week. What's the main thing getting ready for Brownsboro? We, you know, we, we've we focused a lot this week, just attention to detail, back to the basics. Um, that that kind of was our struggle last week in the second half versus Bullard. Um, offensively, we, we got lackadaisical and just and, and started looking at the scoreboard. And that's the one thing that, that we really talk about, but that doesn't matter. It just You, you play the next play and um, just do what your job says it needs to be done. And, and that's, that's kind of what we're after. If we'll do that, then we'll be okay. All right, thanks coach. Everybody, welcome back. And a big thanks to Coach Meeks for the time. Wellington, that just about does it for the Cornerstone pregame show. It does, fine, sir. We thank Cornerstone Balance and Therapy for bringing us the pregame. A big thanks to our pregame guests, Caden Dixon, Sydney Newworth, and, and Coach. We also thank our pregame sponsors, Center Tire, Shelby Vet Associates, Rough Rider Oil and Lube, and Zach's Tent Shop. We'll be right back with the kickoff. JBA Financial Services brings you Coach Talk, and there's a reason for that. John Black knows that when you're preparing for an important game, you need a plan, and they'd like to be a part of the details, the X's and O's of that plan. He's put together a good team, a coaching staff that would help you and your family get where they wanna go. At JBA Financial Services, they're working to secure your family's future. We hope you enjoyed the Cornerstone Therapy and Ballast Center pregame show. We'd like to thank Shelby Veterinary Associates for the Coach Talk, Center Motor Company for our player interviews, Campbell's for our area roundup, and Gaddy's for our cheerleader spotlight. The Shelby Savings Bank kickoff is right around the corner. Stay around. Cornerstone Balance and Therapy is the local place where you go to recover after surgery or after an accident. With up-to-date modern equipment and a staff that cares and knows you by name, the only thing better is where it's located, right at the four-way stop in the middle of town. Cornerstone, helping you get better. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. Evans three point shot. The following is a production of the Rough Rider Broadcast Team, a presentation of Watlington and Shires Productions.
or Bay is the national anthem finishes up, it's time to go to our Ray Jones Chevrolet keys to the game. And what do you think, Mr. Shar, is our, our keys? I want to see us come out and absolutely dominate these guys, have the intensity level, mm -hmm. put them away early so that uh, we can get substitutes in. Yeah, and we're 28-point favorites, and we ought to be able to handle them if we play well. Interestingly, though, Brownsboro is the least respected team in the polls in our, in our district. But the crazy thing is one spot above Brownsboro in the polls, one spot is Spring Hill, hmm. and they are the third seed in their district. And then two spots down is Paris North Lamar, and, and then two spots down from them is Pittsburgh, and one of them's going to the playoffs. So most, you know, their three and four seed is down there. And so it, it just goes to show this district. It's a strong district. It's a very strong district. Our, even our worst teams that aren't even going to be competitive for the right. playoffs are, are probably able to beat a lot of the, the, the district teams that are going. We've got a little bit of time here. So uh, it looks like we have the kick. The, uh... So okay. we, we won the toss and decided to receive. I guess, Rob Payne, what is your thoughts for keys to the game? Get out of the game with momentum for the playoffs, but unhurt. Yeah. That yep. move through this game. Yeah, I think dominating early, making a statement is great. And then putting in, letting some players that don't normally get a lot of playing time play yeah. for experience, mm -hmm. but getting out of the contest for both teams. No one hurt. One team's not going to go in the playoffs. There's no sense in having a career-ending yeah. injury yeah. of some yeah. kind. That's right. And so safety for everyone out here. Play smart. All right, very good. That's our Ray Jones Chevrolet keys to the game. Also need to also mention, uh, we, again, we have the full crew here tonight. Of course, we have the voice of the center Rough Riders, Rob Payne, doing play-by-play. -play, you walked and doing color. Me st sticking my nose in when I can. Um, we, of course, we have we have Jack Allen, I mean, Keaton Wallington. On, <laughs> just making fun of him from earlier. The, and the, Zach best, two, the best two camera people yeah. in, in this part of the world. I mean, we, we've stumbled on really good quality. And then, of course, the, the producer glue that holds it all together is our producer and Scarlet. school board operator, Scarlett Shires, Triple S. Good to have you back here again this evening. You do such a better job at that than I do. So, again, with that, we'll turn it over to Rob Payne with the kickoff. And it's in the air, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of a short kickoff, and the riders oh my field gosh, it look at, at that. the 31-yard line. And with some good blocks, finding a seam down the sidelines, the riders mount a <laughs> wonderful <laughs> kickoff return. However, they step out of bounds, the riders out of bounds, right around the 26-yard line on Brownsboro's end of the field. And the rider offense will have made it, well, the special teams have made a statement early, and now it's time for the offense to come out 26 yards away from the end zone as we begin with Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. And Jabralyn Moore was the up guy. Yep. They're not supposed to get that kind of return, but they, they they kicked it short so we wouldn't, and we did it anyway. That's pretty good stuff. We hear Cash. the music as we have the colonel has arrived in the stadium. <laughs> the colonel has arrived. Cash Cross comes in with three receivers to the right, one to the left. we got a man in motion. we got to fake the handoff. Cross is going to keep it, run right, turn it up the field, and, and really they uh, – Brownsboro seals the corner on the right-hand side, and Cross is limited to three or four yards. Yes, uh, Dylan Downey, cornerback, stayed home enough to keep Cross contained. So usually those, those kind of scribble, scrib, scrambles normally go a lot farther. Just two yards, second eight, and on second down they throw. Ball is caught at the 20. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lance Wilburn makes a move on his defender, and the defender is standing there wondering what happened. I'm still and, wondering. And yeah. Wilburn is uh, in uh, no, he, down to inside the 10-yard line. In the Chris Mayfield State Farm red zone. Hand off to Dixon. Dixon hits the middle, still on his feet. He's hit several times, but Dixon will not go down, yeah. but he will cross the plane. He's in. And it's a touchdown for the center Rough Riders. That's great. One Ray Jones first down, and they are in with less than a minute going by on the clock. That's the way they want to start. A couple good things there. Number one, Lance Wilburn getting involved early. He's kind of slowed down the last couple of weeks, and it's good to have him back in So and doing well. And then uh, Caden Dixon with a huge run right there. So the extra point is up, and it is good. 
So that makes the Riders seven, Brownsboro Bears zero, with 11-11 to go here in the first quarter. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDT. You know that Ace Hardware of East Texas is all the hardware you need, but there's a lot of other things they have too. Fun things for your camping trips. Fun things to wear when you go outside. For the 4th of July barbecue, to the housewarming in the fall, to your Christmas shopping and clothes for all year long, it's Ace Hardware, the helpful place of East Texas. You're watching Rough Rider Football on Twitch.tv. Everybody, welcome back. Yes, we're getting the peppers out, baby. Scarlett, do you remember when it was your job to, do, to uh, hand out all the Dr. Peppers? Extremely important job. And there's the kick, folks. Kick deep. The Shelby Savings Bank kickoff from the Riders to the Bears goes in on the back of the end zone for a touchback. And it's a time to pop the pepper, Watlington. Shires, let's do it. On three. Three. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so, Keaton Watlington, you have a st – Stat, stat man for us. It's appropriate that it comes from stat man. What you got? I uh, was surfing Facebook yesterday. I saw the center Rough Rider um, athletic boosters post on Facebook that Lance Wilburn is currently one touchdown away to tying the single season all time receiving touchdowns record for Rough Rider receivers. Do we know who that who has that currently? Uh, Christopher Evans was one of them. I can look up the other name Surely for you. Surely Octavius. Fact, I can get you that full scoreboard in first with 13 is Jakirion Watson. All right, Rider defense comes up and takes care of business. Christopher Evans is sec is tied as well with 13. Lance Wilburn has 12. Uh, the only person who hasn't gotten up on this leaderboard in the last five years is Devonda Hubbard yes. from 1989, and he has 11. So currently Lance Wilburn um, on radar for breaking that record. That's receiver with my time, Chris Wallen and Devonda Hubbard. Uh, of course, uh, just on that big tackle there, again, number 10, Caleb Mosley, our reigning Center Motor Company co-player of the game from last week. We, we had a nice discussion with, about Caleb uh, during the coaches' show, Chris Wallen. So the Brownsboro Bears take the uh, opening drive here of their of uh, of their possession on first down. They're out of the shotgun, run the ball, get a yard, and Riders defense comes in on second down. They pitch it out and uh, fall third down and about ends up third down. Got another yard, third down about eight for Brownsboro. Jermaine Hunter didn't let the receiver go anywhere after yep. the ball. Yep. So now the Brownsboro Bears are facing third and long after the Riders score on their opening drive, starting with a huge kickoff return. Riders are coming. Out of the shotgun, Bears roll left, looking quarterback, looking for a man around the 40-yard line is incomplete. And that's a pretty hot pass that he yep. threw. But it brings up fourth down for the Brownsboro Bears, and they'll be forced to punt since they're still deep in their end, end of the field. There are um, referees that would call that interference the – Brownsboro receiver got hit from behind, but it was close, and the referee decided it was after the ball got there. So, and therefore, as a result, it was perfect defense. Senior Dylan Downey standing at his right. own 16-yard line, ready to punt the ball for Brownsboro here on fourth down and eight. High snap. He brings it down, and it's a nice punt that's going to bounce j just around the 40-yard line, and the Bears will down it just inside the rider 40 where the Riders will start with their second possession tonight. Nine and a half minutes here in the first quarter, and the Riders lead 7-0. So, Billy Don, tell us about Brookshire Brothers. Well, they got just about everything. Got a good produce section, a fine meat market, and all that chicken. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And the farmers is great, and the people there make it worthwhile. They always got specials if you pay attention. And that manager, he's a nice all right, welcome back. We're going deep. Cross deep for Lance oh. Wilburn. And and by deep, we mean right around the 22-yard line on Brownsboro's end of the field and it passed just ahead of Lance. So it's incomplete. Second down for the Riders. 
That ball was in the air for, what, 5, <laughs> 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 yards. Time. On second down from their own 39-yard line, handoff to Dixon, who breaks into the secondary, breaks one tackle, breaks another, comes left, crosses midfield. He's got three or four bears on him. Somebody's helmet comes off, and they force Dixon out of bounds at the at the Brownsboro 34-yard line. Yeah, that's, that's hard running, isn't it? He just toted a bunch of bears with him. And if you can do that, although you do want to practice your uh, pass and catch tonight, if you can do that, get after it. All right, clock management here. Anyway, on, on first down, a Ray Jones first down, the ball is thrown out and caught. T.J. Bellin. T.J. Bellin and is in for the score on now, a nice little route. Now, that was an interesting thing. we got to ask Coach about that because oh, let's see, what, as we're talking, let's see if we're going to go for two. Nope, doesn't look like it. I'm not sure if that was a broken play or if that was designed that way because it was a fake on that hitch. No, and it then was Bella fake. took off. It was fake because they want to get the player to, to, to bite on the hitch and then get get the receiver by him, and that's exactly what happened. It looked like playing out in the side yards. Yeah, hitch like. and go. The extra point is good. And with 9.02 in the first quarter, the Riders go up two scores, 14-0 over the Browns Barrow Bears, and you're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. Covington Lumber and Building Supplies is in the capable hand of a third generation of Covingtons. For shingles for your roof, to carpet for your floors, to feral Calhoun paint for the walls, bathroom fixtures and everything in between, Covington's has it as well as all the lumber you can shake a stick at. Lumber for your home or for other fun projects. You find it all at Covington's. McAdams Propane Company is your East Texas propane provider. Josh McAdams represents the third generation of a family that has kept clean, efficient propane running to the facilities and farms of the area, as well as to the outdoor kitchens that make life fun. They also have the supplies that make an outdoor kitchen possible. Aware of the community, they have provided a luncheon for the first responders of our area. From the beautiful outdoor kitchen to the important fuel that keeps the engines running, keep your engine running with McAdams Propane and Center. All right, buddy, here's our Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. They're going to take it, and it's going to be a mistake. We're going to see if we catch him, and we do. So it was kind of a squib kick. The Brownsboro player took it about the 10-yard line and then went horizontal. You never want to do that on a kickoff or a you punt. really don't. It just doesn't work out well. And he runs about 40 yards, but he only gets about two yards of, of vertical progress. So Brownsboro is going to start deep. In their own territory around the 10 yard line, it looks like. No. About the 15. About the, around the 15 yard line yeah. off that Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. And Rob, I would think that about in the first three minutes of this game, everything that could go right for the Rough Riders has. Kick special teams, the offense, and now the and the defense limiting Brownsboro to one series. So in their second possession, the Bears are starting at their own really 14 yard line and looking for some room to Something to redeem their season a little bit. <laughs> Want to thank the folks that feed the press box. Some really mm -hmm. good gumbo tonight. Yeah. yeah really good gumbo. Thanks to the folks that feed the press box here in Rough Rider in the ranch. First down for the Bears operating out of the shotgun. Receivers on either side. One back. And the handoff. Going to run it right up the middle. No room to run. The Rider defense is there. I say that. Two yards on the play. Uh, maybe three. And it'll bring up second down for Brownsboro, second about seven. We asked Coach Meeks about the keys tonight for his developing defense. Defensively, I want to keep running to the ball. You know, we did a really good job of getting six, seven, eight hats to the ball. Um, we got to build off of that and continue to build our confidence on that side of the ball. On second down and seven, Ryder's defense jumps a little bit. Maybe a free play here. Looking down the sidelines. Oh, the, so the Ryder wow. defender goes wow. up for the ball and tips it into the hands of the intended receiver who eludes one, two tackles and makes it into the corner of the end zone for the first score for Brownsboro tonight. Big and play. a huge play and a momentum builder for the Bears. No joke. I mean, <coughs> Shires and I have talked all season. At some point, we're going to win jump balls on defense, but Keaton, we didn't win that one. That looked like back in the day when me and my little brother would it's be playing sad. playing catch in the pool and uh, just <laughs> right. who's going to catch it, and that time Brownsboro caught it. And, and that was Chris – that was Cash Cross that, that stepped up and decided he was going to intercept it and just missed it. Yep. Brings up now. 
there was a flag down, but oh, it, was it was against us. Yeah, so. it was against the Riders, and it was declined. It was offsides. So now the extra point attempt as the Bears line up for their first extra point attempt tonight. Kick is up, and it is good. 14-7 ball game, 8-11 here in the first quarter. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. Have you sustained a bone, joint, work, or sports injury? Problems with mobility or movement? Suffer with pain? Contact Azalea Orthopedics. Our specialists serve patients across East Texas for proven, trusted medical care. You have a choice. Demand Azalea. Everybody, welcome back. You're ready for our Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. Heard from my old law partner, Jeff Adams, who's listening. Good. He was asking, what are you saying about Devonda? And we're saying that Devonda Hubbard is is a, a bad man. Bad. But he is still on the on, – he is still on – Tied the, for the, the scoreboard. Most touchdowns for most in one touchdowns season. For, for a wide receiver he's that Lance – Tied for – oh, he's third. He's third. Right. Has 10? 11. 11. Has 11. He's scored 11. Yeah, and, uh, in 89. Right? Yeah, in 89, 89. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so uh, he, he – Lance Wilburn is one away from tying the record and the two away from having the most touchdowns in a single season. So, there you go, Jeff Adams. And will, does it, will that count in the postseason? I guess it would. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's going to break that. The Brownsboro Bears line up for the Shelby Savings Bank kickoff from, right to, from left to right looking at your radio. It's a bouncing kickoff. It goes to the 20-yard line. <laughs> the riders it scoop it up. And now there's a flag comes in. Ryder still at the ball, crossing midfield. And finally, the return man's tackled as he crosses midfield. But two water penalties come in towards the end of that play. That might be a tackling infraction from where that one was yeah, thrown. Yeah, and one was thrown about 20 yards. That flag flew like a better than most Whataburger rappers would fly. Let's listen to Mr. Whitehead. We're, 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 like, we're acting like it's coming back. So I hold him. So it's holding against the Riders, and it'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And my it fault. Looks, it's my fault. I ask you, everything's going right that could go right for the Rough Riders, and then the next play they score a touchdown, yep. and now the Rough Riders have a great return brought back. That's right. Brownsboro has scored, and now the Riders lose 10 yards on a return. That penalty was at the 43-yard line, so the Riders line up at the 33 First and 10, crossing the shotgun, handoff Dixon. Dixon picking his way through the middle of the field, but gets tripped up after a three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and seven for the Riders that here in the first quarter. That may be Edwards. Uh, yeah, that's Dick oh, Edwards, who sometimes in the last two or three games, he's gotten more and more playing time. I, and, and sorry, I can't see the number yet, but we'll do it Edwards again. gets a hand off again. Number five for the Riders comes left, uh, crossing the 35 right. up to the 37-yard line, maybe 38. So, Rob, being a former uh, math professional, we were talking about on the coaches show the other night, if you can average three yards of play, yeah. you can get a first down and just go right down the field. Exactly. And that sounds good. Just, let, just get after it. Cross under some pressure now on third down. He's evaded several tacklers. He's going to load it up and go around the left-hand side and actually makes a move across midfield before he's pushed out of bounds. And Cross gets the first down and a lot more for his team on a third down play. <laughs> and DeCalvey and Edwards, Edwards did a yes. very difficult thing, a big block in the backfield on a scramble that wasn't a clip. Right. A he did back. a very bad yeah. thing because he <laughs> – because he, he uh, blew that he, guy out. Uh, uh, ear hold that guy. Ryder snapping the ball quickly. Hand off to Edwards. Edwards inside the 40-yard line. They're going to be brought down around the 36. Well, they're going to mark him back. It look, I, I don't know where they're going to mark him. I'm going to check. The side judge says 38, like his knee hit the ground before he fell forward. Uh, I, I didn't agree with that. It looked like a, a solid seven-yard game. Well, and the umpire here in the middle of the field is still standing at the – 36, Are they walk off 37. A penalty? It looks like there's a penalty. Maybe. Oh, it may be. Mr. White Hat going to talk to us. Everybody's kind of standing around looking and pointing, and referees are and breathing a little deeply. unclear about seeing what we're ta- what we got going oh, on. It looks like a penalty on Brownsboro, maybe. Never saw the flag, but they are marking it off. Oh, no. So they've put the place the ball at the, where the play ended. That's what you do when uh, it's a twelve. It's too many men on the field. Okay, and so that's what we do when we when we rush like that is try to catch them 
So it's going to be a free five yards. So the Riders take the penalty and go to first down and five. So they repeat the down, but first down and five. One back is Edwards. Cross back to pass. His offense t- uh, picks up the block, There's and he the throws for the oh, end no, zone he dropped it. and had the man there, and then the ball got knocked out of, of Lance Wilburn. That's but there is defense. a flag in the end zone. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, that's going to be pass interference. Well, maybe and that's all gonna... he had to interfere to keep the touchdown. They were awfully close together in the end zone. Man, I thought that was going to be Wilburn's tying score right there. That, he dropped it right in his bread basket. What a great throw by Cash Cross. So, yeah. Uh, in high school, that's just a 15-yard penalty. Yep. But a good very, for a Ray Jones first down. And a very accurate throw, you were saying, from Cash Cross. And hats off to the defender. It was going to be a touchdown, so he interfered. Moves the riders up close to the 20-yard line. Snap, handoff, Edwards coming left, still coming left, grabbed and pulled down, but makes it inside the State Farm Insurance red zone inside the 20-yard line. Talented running back, Edwards. We just found out in senior night he's going to the military when this year is over. Uh, he's had to be a running back behind Dixon. Well, and he's behind the cash cross, takes the fake, and then oh, wow. cross throws uh, in a crossing pattern oh, and intended for number 11, Jeremiah Ratcliffe, but mm-hmm. bounces off his chest, yeah. incomplete. Another Get flag, second though. Now. Well, we have a flag. Yeah. So a what a penalty on the field. We'll check. Okay. In eligible man downfield. We'll penalty against the anyway. Riders. Yeah. This is what Coach said the keys to the offense were. Well, they're going to decline. I want to start fast tonight, try to control the line of scrimmage, um, build off our running game from last week, and uh, just paying attention to the details in the second half. Sounds like that's what we're doing, but this drive has been odd, plagued full of penalties that go against us and for us. Most of go. the gains have been from the referees. Right. So they, they then declared that we took the, they took the penalty, so it's still second down. So it's going to be second and second 12. 12. Yeah, second and 12 on an ineligible man downfield. Crossing the shotgun, two receivers to the right. Cross back, looking left, throws to for Wilburn, but Wilburn's tangled up with his defender there and, and doesn't turn around quickly enough, but I don't think he could have caught the ball anyway. No. That so was, it's going to run up third and 12. Some, somebody was not on the right page, and they're communicating now. Cash looked at him and shrugged his shoulders, and Lance shrugged his shoulders, so uh, that was ill-fated. Big third down play, though. You'll figure they'll go for it unless something bad happens. I think Bellin and Ratcliffe out on the right side. Cross directing his tight end, moving one side to the other. Cross back, throwing to the right, looking for somebody in the end zone, and it's uh, not, It's just not there. The uh, defender is uh, there to make the play, and it's incomplete, fourth down and 12. Yeah, I'm not sure on third and 12 I, I, I'm feeling good about – going for the end zone it's now if you either score or you have fourth and 12 and they're substituting personnel and it looks like they're going to try the field goal this would be his longest one of the year they'll place it mark it at the 31 it makes it a 41 yarder he's had a 40 yarder and he's had two or three between 35 and 40. Hernandez lining up the ball spotted at the 31 yard line he kicks it it is up it is good that was a good gentleman He is still perfect. That would be good from 51. Yeah, that was – that's just awfully good. 41-yard field goal from Hernandez and moves us to 17-7. Riders lead here with 6.01 in the first quarter, and you're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. Sandy Cox is a good State Farm agent. Just ask Drake. He knows. State Farm agents in general are pretty cool, but Sandy Cox has the answers to your questions. Like, what's best for me and for my kids, for my business, for my farm? For all of us in Shelby County, those questions can be answered at Sandy Cox State Farm. Schools and students. All right, welcome back to Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. We kick it deep, and they're going to bring it out, and it's going to be a mistake. This time the riders have them inside the 10. Rob Payne looks about about the 7. Yeah. So Shelby Savings Bank kickoff from the Riders is fielded by Brownsboro around the five-yard line. And 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 like you said, Shires, an error was made instead of letting it bounce through the end because he got about four yards on the return, and the Bears are going to start inside their 10-yard line. 17-7 to seven, the score. Rough Riders scored all three times they've gotten the ball. Last time a field goal by 41 yards from 
Hernandez, who's just that having just a cool great, great season. Yeah, five cool. fifty-three to go here in the first quarter. Seventeen-seven ball game. Bears in the shotgun handoff. Running back trying to pick his pick his hole. Takes his time and makes it up to about the fifteen-yard line for what's about like a five six-yard run. Yep. Second down at about four. These two offenses are very similar, so the defenses are looking at a lot of the things they yep. see in practice. Well, Coach Meeks talked about that on Tuesday night. He said last year they were really kind of a, a ground and pound kind of, yeah. you know, one of those kind of teams, and they just they still do that sometimes, but then they do this, which is trips three right, lines. Yeah. trips three receivers to the right side. The Bears load up on the right hand side. In fact, the running back standing to the right of the quarterback. Who's in the shotgun for the Bears on second down and four? And back to throw. Turns right. It's one of those hitch passes behind the line of scrimmage. Receiver has it. Now he's playing chess with his with the uh, defense. And the defense moves in and tackles uh, short of the first down marker. Let's see. Timoth Awfully close. Timothy Johnson yeah. there first. Going to force a third down. It's a third, and it's, but it's right there at the marker. So. I mean, what, half a yard? Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, where it calls into question whether it was going to be a first down or not. But they do mark it short. So third down and short for the Bears. Wonder if the Ryder defense can get in there and stuff this play. Let's see. Oh, so, uh, oh, they try. Push. and But there's a big push at the end. And from where they're marking it, they need a half a yard and they got a yard. Yeah, that was good play by the Brownsboro Bears. You know, they won every game in their pre-district. Now, you question... The, the competition in previous district, but they were 4-0, and and they surprised Bullard and looked like they might be into something, but they've not won since. They sure would like to close with a victory. Breaking the plane to the 20-yard line, the Bears have a first down, and they've showed flash tonight. I mean, uh, one quick pass, and they were in the end zone. So out of the shotgun, handoff, going back to the ground. Oh, yeah. oh. I thought Running we had back him. comes forward, three. turns left, looks for the corner, turns the corner. Got the corner. Has the 30-yard line and a little bit more. And uh, Cody Atkinson in on the stop then for the center rough riders. And uh, just a little bit short of the first down, so it's second down and short. Yeah, had him. Had him. Had him I stop. thought we had him stop right the line of, right the line of scrimmage. He, he just slipped through. Well, and he does a good job kind of stopping and, and picking his holes. So on second down and short, the Bears have kind of spread the field on this offensive set uh, alignment they have. Two receivers split out wide to the right. Handoff, running back has it. He's got the first down up to the 25 and upended. Uh, up to the 35 and up ended around the 37 yard line. Another tackle by Timothy Johnson, but let me tell you, that offensive line did its yeah, job. They did on they, that play. They created the, the space they needed. First down for the Bears with 317 and, and counting here in the first quarter. And the Riders lead 17 7. Got big number 57, Brandon West, back there in the middle. Let's see if he can't shut that, that middle run down. All right, now they load up the, the Bears load up the left hand side in their away blue uniforms. Brownsboro I like their Bears. I yeah, cool. I do too. I do too. On first down, handoff again. Coming right, coming left. Finding a hole in the middle. Number three over the, across midfield inside the 45 and down to the 43-yard line for a big first down for the Brownsboro Bears. Rob, on that play, we blitzed. You know, Atkinson came through the A gap. He just came through the wrong gap. The problem is if you blitz and miss, yeah. There ain't nobody in the middle. There ain't nobody in the second level to make a tackle. <laughs> All right. Ryder defense lines up on first down as Brownsboro gets into Ryder territory. So they line up, act like they're going to snap the ball, and then Brownsboro stops, stands up, turns the sideline. So they're working that play clock. Now to pass. Ball caught on the left-hand side right at the line of scrimmage, and now the receiver has a nice run. And makes another first down for the Brownsboro Bears deeper in Ryder territory. And Adam Thompson is orchestrating and managing yep. a very good game. He threw the one big right. touchdown pass in the last drive, but this one they started inside yep. the ten, and it's just this is a this is a Hank Stram matriculation, matriculation down the field yeah. kind of drive. They go back to trips right, three receivers on the right side. Last time they threw a hitch pass behind the line of scrimmage with this lineup. Let's see what they choose to do out of this lineup. Well, they choose to run the ball, and so they're going to run out of a trip's right and get inside the 30-yard line and get about five yards on the plate. Yeah, that's what's down. bad about that. It looks like we're going to stack it up right, you know, 
yeah. on the on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and they, they somehow slip through and get but, but, you know, four but, or five yards. But Lieutenant Grant Gregory caught his ankles to keep it from being a long game. On second down and a long five. Two receivers right. So his was uh, <laughs> Gregory's promotion to captain a temporary field oh, thing? I, I, I don't Lead know. Back to the lieutenant. A pitch to the running back. Ooh. Who comes around the right-hand corner looking for more room than he gets. Gets around to the 22-yard line. And it's going to be enough for the first down. A fast and aggressive Cody Atkinson caught right. him right before mm. the first down. Collared him. Oh, they don't. I just yeah. figured they would give it to him on that. Yeah. That's Once close. again, it's one of those half-yard plays. Yep. Third down and sh really short for the Bears between the 25 and 20. And the Bears still just trying to work this clock down, taking their time to snap the ball. Ball control offense, running back, gets it again. Uh, number three for the Bears. Flag comes in at the end as the back gets to the 16-yard line. Man, Mosley yes. almost had him he for was in a the loss. backfield, just missed him. And this is number three. They're, they're running Campbell, back. Anton Campbell, Anton Campbell. Is, has, has been good. Uh-oh. So the rider defense has a face mask penalty, and it'll be half the distance to the goal. And first down for Brownsboro. And most of the penalties have gone against the purple and white tonight. Brownsboro had the big interference call and an offside penalty we declined. Otherwise, the flags have been on us. And what looked like an offensive domination for the center Rough Riders, yeah. they've allowed the, def the uh, B Brownsboro offense to score once, and they're about six yards away from scoring again. And the handoff there we goes go. to Campbell. There Campbell we go. hits the middle, will not go down, and breaks out to the left side, looking like he might get on through. But the rider defense swarms him and makes a stop. For no gain. We're 12 seconds from going upstairs to the batter's first quarter law firm. Looks like they're going to let those last seconds go. We will be right back. And Keaton Watlington will give us what's going on. They stopped the clock at six seconds, so there's a timeout on the field. Well, we can take one as well. Oh, I was jumping off sides. Mangum Funeral Home provides funeral, burial, and cremation services for the East Texas area. The new owners, Tony and Tracy Willoughby, as well as the licensed professional staff are available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call 936 598-3341 or stop by for a visit at 420 St. Augustine Street in Center. Mangum Funeral Home prides themselves on providing prompt, compassionate service during life's most difficult times. All right, but it's in the first quarter. That means it's time to go to the batter's law firm scoreboard. We go to Keaton Wallington. That's the batter's law firm scoreboard noise. I'm going to start with the yes. games that are in the district, uh, in our in our county first. Shelbyville Dragons, West Sabine Tigers. Tigers lead that 30-20. to 20. The Tenohaw Tigers over Overton, 20-0. to 0, The battle of the Atoyak. 14-13 to 13 at halftime, as close as it can be. And the St. Augustine Wolves are beating the Sandys of Grapeland 28 to 20. Let's take it over to the games that are in our district. Canton versus Rusk. Rusk is beating Canton 7 to 0. And the Van Vandals up on the Bullard Panthers 14 to 7. Just looking forward for the Gilmer Buckeyes. They currently lead the Pittsburgh Pirates 29 to 0. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back later. I'll be talking to you guys a little bit later down the road. But Good. that's all I got. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. That's Keaton checking that's out. That's awesome. That is an awesome bat. I bet you Jeff Batters would love that sound. But um, so anyway, 14-13, Balatoya. It's a whole lot closer than I think most people thought. I'm not sure. I think everybody knew this was going to be close early. 21-point favorites, Timson yeah. was, but I didn't, I'm not sure that anyone really believed that. If I'd have gone to Vegas, I'd have, I'd have put money yeah. on the garrison yeah. on that one. But Tenaha is trying to win its district kind of quietly, yeah. and yeah. it didn't start very strong, but, boy, they're closing strong. Oh, there's a nice hole up the middle. And there you up, go. And But hold on. Just hold on to your hat because there might have been a nice big hole up the middle for a yeah. reason. And Holding against Brownsboro oh, on their second down play. So it'll back them up, and they'll have to do it again. As we begin the second quarter, the Riders lead 17-7. However, the Brownsboro Bears 
were inside the 10-yard line until a holding penalty backs them up. Yeah. And they had a touchdown, but the it's going to come back. Still in the State Farm red zone, brought to you yeah. by Chris Mayfield, and what? a bunch of Ray yeah. Jones Chevrolet first down. That's right. Uh, the, one more thing on the batter scoreboard real fast. So, uh, for our Larry Pearson, he needs Shelbyville to win, Shelbyville right? needs and to win. San Augustine is, needs to win. Right. But both red teams. Right. And San Augustine is winning, but Shelbyville is not. That's something. So, that – that does not bode well for Larry and the Wolves. Brownsboro under center. Now the quarterback is scrambling, and he's under a, a lot of pressure. Great We've got play. three or four riders yep. in the backfield, and the rider defense did a really good job on penetration that time. Quarterback scrambling. Finally throws the ball out incomplete. It'll be third down. So yeah. how do you like your water burger With extra mayo, right? Mix that was extra mayo. <laughs> that was mayo out there, and also uh, Caleb Mosley. Again, making another play. But Thompson play. dodged it and managed to get just outside the box and throw it away. Third and goal from the 17. Out of the shotgun now. Oh, another person in our pregame brief, we talk about folks that that, uh, that listen or watch religiously. Veronica Berry texted me to make sure we knew the, the uh, attempts and score. Thank uh, you. Oh, snap to the quarterback and the – Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage <laughs> and tipped into the hands of the rider defenders who come up with it. Oh, it's, uh, no. it's the it quarterback. Was, it, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Thompson, the quarterback, caught his own pass. He sure did. It bounced back to him. Yeah, but it only gained a yard. He did. And so now he's got <laughs> yep. the ball at the 16-yard line, and it's fourth down. And they're going for it. They don't have the field goal kicker. So they're going for it from fourth down and goal from the 16. Big play. Rider defensive line can really pin their ears back and come and try to get the sack on this play. You know they're going to have to throw it. In the early moments of the second quarter, Brownsboro was close to the end zone when a penalty moved them back, and the Rider defense Got him. has been there, and now they'll get credit him for a sack. Atkinson. Quarterback is, is upset with himself. Adam At Thompson, but Atkinson gets in the backfield, trips him up. Atkins is like Chuck Norris. He just blew by him. It was enough to <laughs> knock him down, right? I don't, I don't know that he actually made contact. He just he just went. Whoosh, yeah, he just right had enough air and <laughs> gravity to where it just buckled him. It, 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 he's the quarterback's frustrated because he felt like he should have kept his feet, but right. he didn't. So, great fourth quarter, fourth uh, down sack for Atkinson. The Bears turn it over on downs. Riders first and ten, close to their own twenty yard line, and they'll start. With the ball to Caden Dixon, who runs at about two and a half yards. We need to put that down as but we need Rob to not forget about that as the Dairy Queen play of the half at because least, at least because yeah. that might have been you know if they get in the get in the end zone and yep. go and, and get it within three, then it's a ball game. Yep. On second down, Riders are going to fake the handoff. Cross is going to keep it this time. Comes around the right to the 30, 35, and out of bounds close to the 40 yard line. Cross has a first down. And that one took a little time to develop. Well, not sure if they were going to hand it off or not. It was a broken play is what yeah, it was. Yeah, and I, so it's, I agree. it's just it's it's fun when we have a broken play and, yeah. you know, and we only get 10 or 15. Right. A lot of times when we get a broken play, they go for 30. A lot of our biggest plays this year have been cash. The sideline warning, oh. I think, against we the riders. We get those. We have a very enthusiastic coaching Do staff. Do we not have a sideline guy, a get-back coach? We need to we get, need back, get back, coach. back coach. We do. All right, 10 If I wasn't doing this, I'd go down. I'd volunteer with Coach Meeks to be the get back coach. 10 17 in the second quarter. Riders lead 17 7. Rider defense and penalties keep the Bears out of the end zone. But and maybe so I can the get two jobs, though. Maybe I can get back down the sideline and call the guys up here. But I can also be the get back yeah, coach. Yeah, just, just you're the media guy that keeps the coaches in line. False start, Mr. Payne. Yep, flag comes in. What a penalty against the Riders. False start. First and 10 becomes first and 15 from the 34-yard line. You want to be rough rider lineman strong? You work out with Dan Burkollum at the Forge. The Forge on the square, the best, most scenic place to go. It sure is. I got a great view while you're making your body stronger at the Forge. Two receivers stood out right to the left-hand side, one on the right. Snap, cross back, looking, standing at the... 25-yard line, scrambling now as a man after him. Now they got another man after him. Cross is going to keep it and run down the sidelines to the 40 and out of bounds to the, around the 41-yard line, 42-yard line, and uh, get some of those penalty yards back. Yeah, I'm going to get eight, which means it'll be second down and seven. Yeah, again, just uh, he's, a, he's a maestro. He's a magician back there when he, he doesn't see his man. He's dangerous. 
and you'd think he was out of bounds at some point right. then. Hand off to Dixon, who lowers his head, lowers his shoulder, oh that. forces oh himself goodness. through, and gets the first down out of sheer determination for the <laughs> uh, for the center Rough Riders and his team. And it's Dixon with the first it's down. Tasmanian in. Devil. Yes, or Bull. I was like, Marr. Exactly like me. <laughs> first down, oh. stutter step this time. The Bears' defense is back there in a hurry, and they grab Dixon. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage, a loss of a yard, second and 11. That's right. They got his leg. They got through and got right. his leg. You can't do much when they got no. his leg. He's amazing, but the offensive line's got to do a little better job. Quick snap. Dixon has it again. Dixon with about five yards on uh, the carry. He's running with – out abandoned tonight. Yes, he's 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 motivated, and I, I wonder by what something something specific. I bet you has got him going. It was being in the neutral zone. <laughs> that must be it. Third down and six for the Riders in Bears territory. Snap, cross coming right, cross design, quarterback run to the oh, 40, boy. to the 35, to the 30, grabbed. Oh. Helmet comes off, slung down Man. at the 28-yard line. That helmet didn't just kind of come off. It, it looked slung like. Slung off. Yeah. It, it looked like one of those those, those uh, old toys where like a rock'em, sock'em robot. That, that was that was immediate. And in, instead, instead of it hurting his head, it, actually, I think he got his, his ankle stepped on, so he's not coming back into the game. He'll be replaced by Bellin. Bellin, uh, at quarterback, now takes a snap, handoff to Dixon. Dixon gets Fumble. hit, the ball comes out, and, and just the like that. Bears say they cover it up. So it we've got a, an issue with a player who we have a player substitution and with just a little bit of, of, of ball handling, handoff, getting the ball. The ball wasn't secured. Yeah, I think Bellin's handoff might have been a little high. And the Dixon ball was spun with, around, with and, Dixon, and they were able to yeah, pull yeah. it out. And it looks I'm like sorry, they were Dixon, going yeah. to the ball. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, on the field, the Bears have recovered the fumble, and so the where the Riders took the ball over on downs, they work it down inside the 30-yard line, and now the Bears have the ball first and ten from the right from their own 28-yard line. Last time, the Bears were able to. Just methodically move the ball down the line, yes. down the down the field. Matriculate. Yes. So we'll see what happens on this drive. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Riders lead 17-7. It's been a while since either team has scored. Hand off of the Bears, and they've got a nice seven, eight yard run here on first down. Number Anyone thought the the Browns were a Bears were going to be a pushover? No. That's not the case. I, I I didn't anticipate them to be this feisty though. Trips left, three receivers on the left-hand side for the Bears. On second down, second down and two. Got trip, yeah, trips to the left. Yep, Campbell lining up in the shotgun. Handoff, coming left, 40-yard line. And Thompson hands off to Campbell, and Campbell has the ball to the 44-yard line. Well done. Yeah, left side of that Brownsboro offensive line got the got the riders walled off, and there was a nice running lane for Campbell. First down for the Bears. <clears throat> the 44-yard line. Two receivers to the right for the Bears. Out of the shotgun, called them for the snap. Now they stop, look to the sideline, put more of that work in that clock. Snap, pitch to the right. Campbell stutter steps, picks his hole, and then takes off. He is running down the sideline, and will he make it? Nope. The Riders chase him down and tackle him at the four-yard line. But we just we miss him. So a, 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 a pitch out. Had him. A pitch out, and the offensive line opened a hole up, and we missed a tackle, and off he went. Yeah. Should have should have had him, but boy, he's fast. We uh, he got. All the way, you know, big Ray Jones first down, but they're right back where they were in the last drive at the four-yard line deep in the Chris Mayfield State Farm red zone. Before a penalty drove them back. First and goal from the four. Thompson looks to the sidelines, speaks to his back, says, all right, here we go. Takes a snap, handoff, got a different back, running the ball right now, number 10 for the. Uh, and he's in. For the Bears is Grayson Adams, and from four yards out, gets it in, 
And the Bears make it a four-point ball game pending the extra point. Adams is their big bear. He came in for the short yardage, and, and it was fortunate because he lowered his head. I, there was no guarantee he was going to score, but he got the last couple of yards there on his own. And Brownsboro with 7.07 threatening to make it a three-point game. After uh, trading the ball back and forth on the field, one turning it over on downs, the other on a fumble, and now the Bears have capitalized and scored with a one big play. Now the extra point is good. It's a three-point ball game, 7.07 to go here in the second quarter, 17-14 Riders lead. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. Martin Kennel Inn Center and Nacogdoches has been boarding and grooming pets for over 30 years. Martin Kennel and Grooming continues to grow and improve daily while treating your family pets as they would treat their own. Martin Kennel now offers large animal care at your location. That's right, they offer experienced assistance for your livestock and peace of mind for you. With many years experience, you can rest assured that your pet will receive the attention they need. Give Martin Kennel and Grooming a call in center at 936-244-1930. In Nacogdoches, call 936-560-3643. Right Crosser Dodge Jeep Rams team is cheering on the Center Rough Riders and we're proud to support the Center ISD's administration, staff, students, and fans. This is General Manager Jeff Baker of Right Crosser Dodge Jeep Ram and I invite you in to see the new vehicles we have in stock as well as the area's best selection of pre-owned. We're all taking care of our customers' needs and you'll have my promise we'll take care of yours. Come see us at Right Crosser Dodge Jeep Ram, Highway 96 North and Center and go Riders. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for another Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. These, those of you listening on the radio, it's 17 to 14. Riders lead, but Brownsboro is making this very competitive. We got 7:07 to go in the second quarter. And there's a kick. It's going to be a line drive. It's going to get past the Riders. We're going to pick it up slowly but surely. But here we go. Edwards is going to get it. He's going to get back to about the 22. But that was just you know that football is just it's it's not a it's not an oval. It runs circle. from you. Yeah, you get weird things happen, and that's what happens there. So, Chris, what do we got coming up at halftime? The Aurora Concepts Halftime Show. We start with the East Texas Auto Motor Halftime Analysis with uh, you and the guys. And then we'll have the batter's halftime scoreboard with Keaton Watlington. Then Deb's Boutique presents the Center High School Band, joined by the eighth graders, about 300 musicians on the field tonight. We'll also learn the band Sweetheart and Bow. And then for the last time here in center, Bounds Insurance presents the CHS Chaparrales. Then we'll have the borders up close and personal with Cash Cross. So we learn a little bit about what he has in store for the rest of this year and beyond. It's all coming up on the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show. Meanwhile, Rob, there was a penalty on the play. Yeah, personal foul penalty, uh, illegal block, and it's uh, the ball moves the ball back for the Riders inside the 15-yard line. Riders going to take the snap and run it at the Dixon to the left-hand side and up to around the 15-yard line. So picks up a couple, second down and eight. So the difference in the ball game right now is a 41-yard, a phenomenal 41-yard field goal from Carlos Hernandez, three-point ball game. And on second down, cross throws to the right side. Dixon has it, now turns the corner, comes out of the backfield, and, and Dixon, let's see, I want to see where they mark him enough for the first down. So they move the sticks for Ray Jones. Chevrolet first down for the center rough riders. That's the first time we've seen that. I wondered That's if right. we were going to have that. <laughs> right. I was hoping we would run something like that against Carthage or Van. Yes. Get Dixon out in the, out in space okay. and make Is somebody that try his to first reception of the year. I mean, it's the first time I remember seeing yeah, that. It doesn't happen much. First down to the 28 yard line with six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Cross looks right, looks left, throws a deep ball down the left hand side and looking for Wilburn on the left side. And the ball is, is right about there, but well defended by Brownsboro. And the defender is there to break that up, bring up second down and 10. Micah Strickland was, was beaten, but the pass was a little bit, it wasn't, it didn't make him run to the ball. So right. he had to slow down to get it. Strickland was able to catch up and knock it away. Good play by Strickland. Wilburn or check out on this play. Probably got to catch his breath here. That's, that's the one thing that's been a little odd is that Cash and Wilbur just hadn't quite been clicking on the same page. Like the last they were in the first half of the yeah. season, yeah. Cross hands off to Dixon on second down and 10. Dixon to Look the 35, to the 40. Him. First down, 45, 50. Look at him. 45 Look and inside him. the 45. And Dixon him. Get off me, baby. <laughs> still on his feet, will not Get off down. me, baby. <laughs> and to the 40-yard line, and he's finally brought down. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That's in the 68. Okay. Uh, Dixon, there's a, 
we are tracking records because this offense is on a record pace. One of them involves Dixon, I'll tell you after this play. Riders are not interested in the play clock or working the clock. They're interested in playing football. Hand off, come right straight ahead on and to inside the 40 down to around the 38 yard line, second down and nine. Two years ago, Red Horace, you remember him, oh, set yeah. a record for rushing touchdowns that I didn't think would ever be touched. Here we go. On second down, Riders throw. Ball is Good. caught by Bellin at the 38. Oh, Bellin, Bellin breaks a tackle oh, down to Bellin. the 20, 15, and out of bounds at the six-yard line. Oh, he he didn't make a move. He just he freed made the himself. move. He freed himself. What yep. a beautiful play by Bellin to get down for the Ray Jones first down into the State Farm red zone. Thank you, Chris Mayfield. And first down and goal for the Riders, only leading by three. All right, Cross calling for the snap. Hand off to Dixon. Dixon is hit pretty quickly, but crosses the five-yard line. They're going to mark him at the four. Yeah, second and goal in the in the Mayf in the State Farm Mayfield red zone. Yes, sir. After a Ray Jones first down, it's now second and goal. Dixon gets a carry oh, wow. again. Grab from behind. Good tackle. Number after good penetration. Off, yep, yep. But Brownsboro. Makes a nice penetration there. That young man needs some Carnahan. recognition. Jason Carnahan just did something that very few people can do is stop him short. And then third down now. No and, gain on the play. Third and goal from the four. And Dixon's coming out of the game. He needs to, to breathe a little. You got Edwards in there. Edwards in the backfield. Three receivers in the game. Cross puts a man in motion. Snap, cross left, handoff. Edwards has Look it. Look at him. Looking for the outside, stops and turns and tries to go in, but he stops long enough for the defense to get to him, and it's going to be fourth and one. Fourth down from the one and a half yard line. Yeah, I thought he was going to get around the corner and score, yep. but he didn't. He didn't think he could outrun him, so he cut, cut inside, and that allowed enough pursuit to get to him and stop him just short. Fourth down and one for the Riders. Four fifteen to go in the half, leading by three. They need this. All right, fourth down, and Cross is going to keep it, and into the goal line he <laughs> is. Touchdown. Cash cross from the one and a half yard line. And, and remember, this is the same guy that hurt his ankle on the last series. He, he, he didn't look like there was any problem. And he it? just hurt somebody else's That's ankle. Right. Hurt their feelings. Great run by Cross for the touchdown. And now it is 23 14, awaiting the extra point. That's right here, Locke. He said the cash cross cashes it in from one yard That's out. That's good. There we go. That's good. That's why he does this. He's job. a wordsmith down there. <laughs> The Hernandez extra point, cross holds. It's a kick is up and good, and uh, the Riders add one more point. So ten, it's 24-14. You're tuned to Rider Football on, a, on KDET. Toledo Automotive Supply of St. Augustine has parts and supplies for cars, pickup trucks, and commercial trucks, even farm and agriculture. If you're needing hydraulics and heavy-duty filters or brakes and shoes, this is your one-stop shop. Toledo Automotive Supply of St. Augustine stocks popular brands of parts, tools, and accessories, and they have parts for marine and farming equipment. Owners David and Sherry Nettles and staff provide top-quality customer service at Toledo Automotive Supply of St. Augustine. Just a short drive at the intersection of Highways 96 and 21. Are you looking for a residential lake, commercial, acreage, farm, or ranch property? This is Alma Jaimez, part of the home team at Town & Country Real Estate, and we have over 50 years experience in selling beautiful East Texas and are now licensed in Louisiana. I would love to assist you with all of your real estate needs, so please call me at 936-488-9988 or come by 114 Nacogdoches Street on the square in downtown center. Avalo Espanol. Right back. For the next Shelby Savings Bank kickoff, Riders have done a really good job of pinning Brownsboro deep so far. We'll see what happens this time. They're going to kick it deep again, and they're going to field it. and call it. This time they're going to fair catch at Chris Wallington. And they'll begin at the 25. That's well, probably what they some should calculations do. there? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting some great information from Keaton, who is getting this from the uh, Athletic Boosters website. Some interesting stuff. I'm, I'm more interested in this than I am the actual plays, unfortunately. Oh, that's all right. We, you, you work on that. Rob and I'll take it all from, right, from all here. Right, all, right. all right. So, Mr. Payne, here we go. First down and 10 with four minutes and five seconds to go. Riders back up by 10, 24 to 14 as Brownsboro starts a possession. 
At following the Shelby Savings Bank kickoff, operating out of the shotgun, the Bears have it from the 25. Handoff coming up the middle, oh. and the Riders arm tackle very quickly after a one-yard pickup. Very well done. Looks like that was number 44 for the center Rough Riders who made that stop. Yes, it was. Mason Mayo, who was there to shut that down in a hurry on senior night tonight. Senior Mason Mayo made a nice stop. Mayo makes four or five of those a game. Second down and nine for the Brownsboro Bears. A, a three and out would be nice. We're in that critical middle eight section of the game, guys. Yes. yes. So, uh, you know, obviously coach wants to get a stop and get a score and then get the ball back. Three and a half minutes to go in the half. Fake the handoff and the quarterback's going again. down. And it's Mayo driving the quarterback from Brownsboro into the ground. In fact, quarterback is slow to get up. Did not Adam put, Thompson, yep. and he's back down on a knee. He, he, he's all right. He just probably just a stinger, but he uh, is uh, headed he over walked. to his coaches to visit with him. And, and I'm going to guess well, we only have a timeout on the field. Our right, folks, we'll get ready to take one too. But, yeah, Mayo did not – the the uh, play-action pass did not fool him. He did not go for the, the uh, running back. He went straight for the quarterback. And we do have a timeout on the field. We'll take a quick one as well. We'll be back. And hopefully Mr. Wallington will be done calculating here in a minute and we'll have some kind of some kind of information that yeah, will be helpful. Yeah, so yeah, we'll be right stuff. back. Matthews Realty going above and beyond is what's expected. This is agency owner Colin Matthews. Our team of seasoned real estate professionals believe in giving their clients an advantage in any real estate transaction. Matthews Realty has a reputation of highly personalized service. Matter of fact, it's our number one priority. From commercial and residential properties, poultry farms to beach rentals, our team works hard so you don't have to. Call Matthews Realty at 598-7800 or visit MatthewsRealty.com. Fry's Food Truck, y'all, you need to find it. Find fries and, and what's that, feast. What's that thing they have? I'm afraid Pou to say it. Poutine, gravy, mashed potatoes, I mean, not uh, French fries and your choice of meat, but you don't cheese even curds. really need it. And with cheese curds, you don't really need the meat. The meat makes it heartier, but it's just gravy. delicious. But, the, yeah. Yeah, but what did we learn from Rob Payne? It's Canadian. It's Cana he says it's Canadian dish. And I, if Rob says it has to be true, it, he wouldn't pull I'm our going with that. He, Yeah, I thought I had something on it. He said, oh, yes, the Canadian dish. Well, dang. Canadian. It. <laughs> but they have other things as well. And it's all good. Be sure and find them. The Fry's food truck around Shelby County. Third, all right. Third down and 13, Payne. Bears are back. Looks like they've got a <coughs> yeah, third and 13 after the loss on that play. All right, snap, and uh, we've got a new quarterback for the Bears, at least for one play, who's scrambling Good one scramble. way, other way. Right. And number nine for the Bears comes in That's and has Fran. a nice four-yard run for the Fran Bears. Fran on that. Yeah. And it's going to bring up fourth down, but now they're going to mark it. You know, I'm waiting to see where they're going to mark it. It's, it's not a first down. They're going to have to punt here. Jackson yep. Parker and Cody Atkinson contribute to the tackle, and Cody Atkinson – doesn't even have to have another tackle before he started tonight. He has has the record for the most tackles in one season. Can you believe that? Uh, with 180 of them. Well, the coach uh, Meeks can be is probably pleased with this fourth down and the uh, like the way the Riders started the game. They've got the Bears pinned back and now fourth down and eight and the punt oh my. snap goes over oh the boy. head of the punter <laughs> and he kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Good idea. He and it's saved, a safety. He saved five add, points. <coughs> and adds two points <coughs> to the rider total as the snap on special teams goes over the head of the Brownsboro punter. And the punter, and rather than falling on her trying to do something with it, just kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Smart play by the punter. And it's a rider's 26 and the Bears 14. 26-13, Twenty, isn't that something? But a special teams gets a chance to score, too. And, of course, that means the, that now Brownsboro has to kick off from uh, way further back than they want to. They get a choice of kicking or punting. Oh, wait, there's a penalty. Oops. It's not going oh, to Never call mind. Back. It's called back. And there was a – the, the defensive line was lined up over the snapper. Apparently you can't do that anymore. And, and, yeah. And so and they – 
not only do we take the points off the board, but they're close enough now to consider going now, for not, it. Not down there. I wouldn't think they would, but fourth down and just not quite three. So fourth down. So it fourth remains, down and yeah. three, and the Bears still have their putting unit in. Now the referees, several things. Come They're telling the rider me. coaches yes. to move back to their own sideline. Meanwhile, Coach Meeks is visiting with Mr. Whitehat to try to get some clarification on what exactly has happened here. Now what? I was just blown away while we're waiting that, I mean, we knew that our boy Atkinson is a tackling machine, but he is already. Yes. 170 tackles yes. came in tonight. That's we, the most in any single season ever. Yes. Just uh, you remember Justin Lovett yes. had 153. Eric Allen had two seasons where he was close. Yeah. He had 148 for his best. Lovett was all state. Yeah. Just like Atkinson's going to be. And he's, he's just got to be. With that, that kind of resume, that's just he, unreal. He also had uh, – see, you weren't at the coaches' show on Tuesday Halloween, but he uh, Atkinson also has – I think, the, I think he had 30-something tackles against Bullard. Like the single game right Yeah, Yeah, s- yeah. single it's game. Unreal. Unreal. And he's a sophomore. I think he might have the all-time tackle record. I remember last year in the playoffs, Eric Allen needed one more tackle to tie for the all-time lead. I think Colton probably catch him by the time mid- midway through his junior year. Yep. All right, so some clarification. Coach Meeks has been visiting with Mr. Whitehat and comes away. I, I, don't, I don't think he – well, he certainly didn't agree with the call, and uh, but you know I don't think a call on the field. It took the safety off, and and it was more of a getting a clarification yeah. of exactly what they were talking about because I never heard that call before, Stephen. Yeah, I haven't either. But you know I don't think you line up, but maybe well no, they're going to kick it. I, this another, might be a place you'd punt it. So I another mean, high snap, it's a spiraling punt, and the Riders will field it, fair catch it at the thirty-five yard line. So the result of all of this, Riders field the punt. Fair catch at 35 with 2.03 to go here in the first half. And the Riders lead 24-14 with the ball on their own 35. What I was thinking was, you know, you wouldn't line up to go for it. But now that might have been something where you might think about a fake Maybe punt. a fake, yeah. Because it's only about four is all you needed. And they're 10 points behind, and they do get the ball, yes. Brownsboro. So they're, they're st- definitely in this game. Rough Riders need to try and get some space. But that's middle eight. This is where we need to capitalize and score. Fake. All right. Out to Bellin. Bellin in at quarterback, or I'm sorry, uh, Cross throws to Bellin and, and receiving the ball gets up to the 40 yard line for a nice five yard pickup, second down riders. This time Bellin unable to shed the tackler, mm-hmm. but he still makes a nice five yard. He game. does. Cross hands off to Dixon this time. Dixon coming left, coming right, hits the middle and covered up by Bears one yard short of the first down marker. Riders go quickly. They line up. Minute and a half to go. Clock running. Riders still with timeout, so. Yes, still have three. And Bellin takes the ball oh, oh, this is uh, the on a nice reception, streaking down the sidelines, and Bellin desperately trying to stay in bounds. And he did it. He, he did, and finally just leaned out around the 20-yard line. To- He'll get the Ray Jones first down. Yep. Oh, he pick, he, they no. marked him out of bounds short of the red zone at the 27. It was still did. a good uh, game. Nice block by number 11, Jeremiah Ratcliffe, down the field for his, his wide receiver cohort. Ray Jones first down. Hand off uh, Kit Dixon. Dixon trying to pick a place to go. Turn around the left-hand side. Now trying to turn it up field. And on first down. <laughs> Sheds one, sheds another, and yep. then two push him out of bounds. And then a flat, then an official sheds a flag. Which Looks like the flag comes out. What a penalty and it's false start. Illegal procedure. Dang, dang it. Huh. Illegal procedure against the riders. It'll back them up. That's First probably been Brownsboro's best uh, group. Uh, offense, defense, special teams, the officials. And I'm not saying they're calling a bad game. Rough riders have committed enough errors to keep Brownsboro close. Well, we've still got a minute seven to go for the folks on the radio. Minute yeah. seven, riders up 24 to 14. Uh, they are driving. They are on the 32-yard line. And first down and 15. An injury report from Brownsboro. Their quarterback's out of pads. I mean, they're going to go with their backup the rest of the game. It's like the third quarterback we've knocked no, out. Yeah, it's strange. All right, first down and 15. Cross now in the shotgun. Snap. Looking down the field, looking, looking, trying to pick his target, looking, looking, waiting, under some pressure now. Now he got to throw it. 
Has a man coming across the field around the 15 yard line, but it's incomplete. The ball lands at his feet and it'll be second down and 15. Dixon did a nice job there on a blitz pickup to give Cash time to, to float out to the left. And a timeout for the Rough Riders as they want to consider their options here on this down, this down. Uh, let's be, keep it here if we can. Uh, can we do, do we need to take care of business? Let's take care of one. All one. Right. We'll be right back. Rough Rider football is brought to you in part by McAdams Propane Company. Gas up your engines with McAdams. Joe's Car Spa with Joe's clean is easy. Yard Birds, the finest barbecue right at the city limit sign on Tenaha Highway. And Sandy Cox State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Sandy Cox is there on Tenaha Street. Everybody, welcome back. Chris Wallington, what you got on your mind? Well, several things. First of all, if you weren't watching the pregame show, uh, Mr. Watson, thank you for watching every yes. week, Bobby Watson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Secondly, the Rough Riders are facing uh, some critical time here in the last 50 seconds uh, where they need to score. Uh, thirdly, I still want to get around to talking to the running back single season touchdown record race, but we got to take care of business first. Second down and 15. Cross calls for the ball oh. and going to hand off to Dixon, but Dixon runs right past him. So Cross has got to keep it and scramble to the right and inside the 30 yard line and out of bounds. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. It's the week 10. You wouldn't expect that to be happening between the, the two starters. He just turned and the, the running back went the wrong way. No, somebody, somebody, one of the two of them did not do what they were supposed to. Third down and 11 inside the 30 yard line. Riders can easily get a first down. We'll see how they choose to do that. Throwing the ball, Bellin catches it at the 20, and Bellin is going to be tackled short of the first down. But, I mean, a well, let's see. Forward progress. Yeah, he's going to be just short. Yeah. So, so, what do you do here? Fourth and one. Clock still moving. Fourth and, I mean, this is another one of these half-yard plays. The Riders have already had two of them. Fourth down and short. Almost like the seat. Hernandez caught kick another one. <laughs> Just caught. inside the State Farm. Uh, oh, red what zone. a great play by number 29 for Brownsboro. He read it perfectly. We don't even have his number. We'll call him Tanner Ackerman. He was so far in the backfield, he was tackling Dixon as he was getting the ball, and that's an emphatic stop on fourth down by the Brownsboro Bears. And the Riders turn it over on downs. Unfortunately, the Riders tried to go up on the Bears as we go into halftime, somebody the Bears have a huge yeah. defensive play and now have the ball at their 24-yard line with 11 seconds. Well, no, somebody on the offensive line is going to get, gonna get a yeah. chew in at halftime. Yeah, I, I would think. You can't, that can't happen. But they Not on fourth and one. They run blitzed and guessed right and 11 seconds to go, and it's only Rough Riders are only up by, what are they up? 10. 10? 24-14. And backup quarterback. For the uh, Bears, Dil uh, now it looks like number nine, Dylan Downey in the backfield. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe that's the number. Did you tell everybody Chris Walken during our East? Oh, they're wanting to put 19 seconds back on the okay. game. You tell everybody our special treat we're going to have during the East Texas Automotor Half. We're going to have a special. Are we? Yes, guest uh, okay. expert. Tell tell them who. The Colonel. The Colonel himself. The Colonel Matt himself. Gregory. Matt Gregory for, uh, used to do this on a regular basis. Yes, he did. On first down, backup quarterback. Takes the snap. That's Downey. He's going to haul off and throw it to the right-hand side. He has a receiver in the area, and a defender is there as well. And finally. And the defender, Bellin, it looks like, who knocks it away, <laughs> incomplete. Well done. You just hold your breath cross. on those things. Yeah. Finally, we maybe got Cash Cross did it. Knocked one down. Well, you yeah. thought we were going to pick it off because it was a duck. Yeah. And uh, it was just up in the air forever. But we have lost so many 50-50 so balls. That you just right. hold your breath and go, oh, my God. Here you go. He, he's going to miss it. The guy's going to catch it, tip to to himself and then score a touchdown. Fortunately, not this time. Yep. Probably the last play of the half. There's a snap, handoff, running the ball, coming left. Campbell to the 30, Campbell to the 31. And the clock is going to run down unless they call a timeout. And they're going to let it go. 24-14 is our score here at halftime. And you're tuned to Ryder Football on KDET. Northeast Texas Sports Network and Azalea Orthopedics present Northeast Texas football, the 2023 season.
At Aurora Concepts, our team of doctors and advanced practice providers are highly trained and qualified in family medicine. We strive to provide our patients guidance towards the healthiest lifestyle possible, no matter their age. We offer a full spectrum of family medicine, including scheduled appointments, telehealth services you can do from home, and walk-in visits with no appointment. We accept all major insurances, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we also have the most competitive self-pay rates in the area. For highly trained expert care in East Texas, choose Aurora Concepts. Let us take care of you. The first half is over, so now it's time for the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show. Tonight, we begin with Deb's Boutique, bringing you the award-winning Center High School Marching Band. Also tonight, we'll learn the identities of the bow and sweetheart of the band. Following that, it's Shelby County Sweethearts, the Chaparrales, brought to you by Bounds Insurance. Then each Texas Auto Motor brings you some halftime analysis, and Batters will bring you the halftime scoreboard. Then Borders Poultry Supply brings us up close and personal with our quarterback, Cash Cross. So enjoy the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who in 1984 looked just like Keaton Watlington, Rob Payne. Welcome to the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show here in the ranch, ladies and gentlemen. It's a 24-14 ball game. Riders lead the Bears. And, Counselor, it's time for us to p pick our DQ play of the first half. I have a couple different things. Okay. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have the, the kickoff, the opening kickoff that kind of nice set return. the tone. Yeah. yeah, the kickoff return that set the tone. And then we have, of course, we have the big sack down here uh, that really kind of changed the momentum because they, uh, Brownsburg could have got it to within three, and I believe that was Atkinson. Atkinson that blew through, and we never really saw his hands on the quarterback. Yes. It was just enough to get the quarterback yeah. and go down. And, you know, I like picking a defensive play for the play yes. of the half. That's, that's what we're going to choose. We're going to choose the Atkinson sack. Sounds great. Our DQ play of the half. And Dairy Queen, remember this time of year, yes, you can still get ice cream, but – Tonight for supper, I had a cheeseburger basket from Dairy Queen. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Y'all can load up on that, too. And thanks, Dairy Queen, sponsoring our play of the game. Just Time get to it take with, a break. Yeah, get it with extra mayo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Time to take a break. We come back. More of the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show live from the ranch. Shelby Veterinary Associates and Center understands that your pet's health is important and they take every step to give your pet the best care. From preventative wellness exams to vaccinations, heartworm tests, and flea and tick pills. Ask Dr. Mark Jasson about the benefits of dental care for your pets to prevent infections and bad breath. Also offering a heartworm injection that prevents heartworms and lasts for 12 months. Shelby Veterinary Associates, treating your pets like the valued family members they are. Now carrying Semperica Trio. Hi, are you tired of the high cost of medical care? Tired of insurance that doesn't want to do anything for you? Don't have any insurance? I'm Sharon Nelson, a family nurse practitioner. I see patients of all ages for very low cash prices. For physicals, illnesses, labs, refills of medications, chronic disease management, male and female exams, suturing, joint injections, minor surgeries, come see me. Sharon Nelson at Nelson Family Practice, 420 Tenaha Street, across from the Dairy Queen and Center. Say I blue and poquito espanol. Everybody, welcome back to the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show. It's time to go to our batter's halftime scoreboard with Keaton Statman Wallington. Beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep. That's that noise that yes. I've been coming up with for the batter's scoreboard. Let's go ahead and kick it out. We're going to start with the, uh, the teams that are in our county. Shelbyville Dragons versus the West Sabine Tigers. That score is not up to date because my internet is bad, so let me try to get that one fixed for you real quick. The uh, Shelbyville Dragons and West Sabine Tigers seem to be stuck in limbo. 30 to 20, I guess somebody has not updated that one recently. Timpson Bears, Garrison Bulldogs, the Battle of the Atoyak, 21-13 in favor of Timpson. St. Augustine Wolves over the Sandies in the third quarter, 28 to 20. Now let's take a look at the games that are happening in our, uh, in our division. The Rusk Eagles versus the Canton Eagles, Battle of the Eagles, 13 to 0 at the half. The Van Which Vandals, one? yeah, uh, in favor of the Eagles, yeah, <laughs> um, and the Van Vandals are beating the Bullard Panthers 14 to seven. 
at the halftime as well. The Gilmore Buckeyes are up 50 to 6 over the Pittsburgh Pirates, so we just have them to look forward to for the rest of the game. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, it's the Rusk Eagles that are ahead of Canton. Oh. I'll say that, that that battle of the Eagles probably looks like a Christmas fest with the red and green all over. That's lot. right, exactly. Yeah. You know it's just the most Christmas. It's Christmas. It's America. It's yeah. Eagles. Eagles. It's, it's everything you can the ask Eagles for. Eagles are winning. Them. Yeah, yes, they are. I mean, it's a win-win for Good everyone involved. Right there. That's all I got for y'all guys today. Thanks for having me. I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, sir. As long as the Eagles don't win on Sunday, that's all that matters. Well, yes, they, I'm I agree. <laughs> all right, so now it's time for our East Texas Automotor halftime analysis. It's a shame because we've had the Colonel sit down right below us, just just <laughs> right below us every home game this year. But we finally got him up here into the uh, into the press box because welcome, Colonel. What's Matt going on? Gregory. How you doing? So, uh, again, used to be we, we when we were down on the sideline when you were yep. principal and That's we'd be it. down there and I was on the sideline, we would get together and do this all the time. We so would. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you back Good up. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. So, uh, let's go ahead and start on the offensive side of the football. You, you are a, a, a former. A coordinated offensive behavior. Yes, you did. Past. You I did. Sure That's right. So, uh, let's go ahead and start with the offense. What, what, have you, what are you seeing out there? Uh, you know, obviously – all year we've been real explosive on offense, uh, kind of tonight as well. Uh, I think we're a little more efficient running the ball. I'd like to see us uh, be a little bit more patient um, in terms of the guy carrying it. But he's running hard. I mean, he's made some plays out there that yeah. just been pure effort. Uh, I think T.J. Boleyn's really showing up tonight. Yes, he he's is. He's made some plays tonight, uh, and he's made a little more extra happen uh, when he's had a big play. There. Yes, that's right. And that's something – We've needed that, you know, for early part of the year. Mm-hmm. It was Wilburn that was making you right. know, most most of the plays. The other guys were getting some. Have you noticed? I, I just it seems like Wilburn and Cash the last two or three weeks just haven't quite clicked right. like they normally have. And I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, if, tonight yeah. tonight Lance has got a kid on him that that can run pretty well yeah. too. Lance is get Lance is getting a step or two on him. But you know, when you watch Cash Cross live throw a football, you're like, man, I don't think he can. Uh, underthrow anybody yeah and then you look at Lance Wilbur and take off running and all of a sudden he underthrows him but uh it's two very talented kids that do very special things yeah. and, and uh, you know it'll sync up it's it's some it's some precise stuff going on I just wonder if we, once we got into, into district with I mean these teams we've been playing the, yeah. the, the defense has been good if you put a guy over there yeah. you know Wil- Wilburn is probably drawing the number one quarterback yeah I think he's drawing their kid that's committed to uh, big 12 school oh yeah yeah, yeah. So that's on the offensive side. What what do you think the key offensively second half? Uh, you know, obviously with the lead, you want to keep the clock ticking. Uh, you want to soak as much of that time up as you can. Uh, Russell, run the ball a little more uh, efficiently. Keep the running game going. And then when you get shots, you know, we spread, you know, we, we line uh, three receivers up outside yep. both sides of the numbers. So when you get that space, go ahead and take advantage of it uh, to put it, pad the stat, pad the uh, score a little bit more every now and then. There we go. Defensively, let's talk about that. Uh, of course, the defense is, you know, young and inexperienced, and we, we yep. just see them getting better and better every it's week. It's fun to watch them grow up a little yeah, bit, isn't it? It is. We, t- we talked about that because we've got the, the lieutenant down there That's along it. with some of the other guys and uh, called his name a couple times this evening. Uh, defensively, what do you think the – what are you seeing out there? Well, you know, Brownsburg is a real field team. I mean, pretty much yeah. everything they do is to the, to the field. Um so, you know, people playing backside like the lieutenant, they got to keep pursuing the ball and just make sure they're checking for that split flow stuff, that right. split flow cutback drag stuff. Uh, but, you know, keep pursuing the football, rally the football. You know, it's team technique and tackling. that You can, you can get real uh, complicated talking about defense, but if you do those three things, right. uh, good things are going to happen. So get to the football, play good technique, and tackle when you get there. Well, very good. So just let's take a minute to visit, Colonel. What, what are you up to these days? Well, I'm uh, – Currently, a uh, little too high in the weight class. But <laughs> well, we all about, what am I doing? Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm currently the principal at Marshall High School, and the Marshall Mavericks, El Toro, yes. the Big Red, is up on the uh, White House Wildcats 17-10. to 10 There half. we go. So that's good stuff right there up in Harrison County. Um, and that's, yeah, here at uh, Dr. Langley and, the, and uh, Marshall High has been very gracious to allow me to attend my son's games. And yes. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and uh, I sit in the stands with my earbud in with the Maverick game on my left knee on my phone, and, and <laughs> so Rough Riders live right up there. Uh, in addition to that, you know, just, just trying to be a, a good dad and a good yeah, husband. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's awesome to see you out here, and it's awesome to watch, watch your son. Good to be here. And he's going to be I mean, a lot of I familiar just, faces. Yeah, it's going to be great just to see him mature and and, be, right. and become – you know, it's a, fun a to watch stalker. kids grow up, and, yeah, and I, I always enjoyed that as a coach, is watching the young kids develop and start to figure things out, and uh, you know, yeah. just 
by their body language, you can tell what kind of play they're going to have. Yeah, of course. You recognize Triple S over here producing the show, Scarlett. She's <laughs> yep. gone right now. She just graduated from UT with a computer science I, degree. I was figuring, so. does she own the world yet? I mean, <laughs> Not yet, she's but it's one coming. of the smartest humans I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Well, thanks, Colonel. We look forward to getting you up here in the, yeah. uh, in the playoffs. Absolutely, look forward so, to it. Uh, if it's at Hallsville, though, I'm going to have to be undercover, you know. Oh, yeah, Because I'm not welcome over there. I understand. We may not be either. <laughs> All right, thank you, Coach. That's right. uh, Thank you. That's uh, Matt go, Gregory. Go Riders and go Mavs. There we go. Uh, we'll take a break. We're here from East Texas Auto Motor along with our uh, Batters Law Firm. And we'll be back with the Aurora Concept. Concept. Sorry about that. The Aurora Concepts Halftime Show live here on Net SN and on KDET. We take our cars for granted, but what happens when they won't start or they won't run or they won't turn off or you get the lights on the dash that say something's wrong and you don't know what to do with it? East Texas Auto Care. It's on Tenaha Highway as you leave town on the left, and they can take care of everything. The trained technicians understand the complicated electronics as well as the engine itself. The Mendoza family would love to take care of you and your vehicle at East Texas Auto. Batters Law Firm is proud to be a third-generation law firm, serving the injured people of East Texas since 1964. Batters has settled thousands of cases and paid out over $25 million to clients from settlements in the past two years. Visit one of their locations for your free, no-appointment consultation, and let the Batters team implement their proven approach that incorporates treatment and recovery while maximizing settlements and payouts. Batters Law Firm, serving you in Nacogdoches, Lufkin Center, and Houston. Remember, when it matters, call Batters. 833-BATTERS. 833-B-A-D-D-E-R-S. At Aurora Concepts, our team of doctors and advanced practice providers are highly trained and qualified in family medicine. We strive to provide our patients guidance towards the healthiest lifestyle possible, no matter their age. We offer a full spectrum of family medicine, including scheduled appointments, telehealth services you can do from home, and walk-in visits with no appointment. We accept all major insurances, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we also have the most competitive self-pay rates in the area. For highly trained expert care in East Texas, choose Aurora Concepts. Let us take care of you. Numbers. All right, welcome back to Aurora Concepts halftime show. We see the the Brownsboro band. It's a nice size band and pretty good sound. Chris Walker. Yeah, they're good. And while they're finishing up, I, the game moves so fast it's hard to, to talk about anything other than the game itself. But Keaton found these records that that this offense is. You know, it's going to set records. Strangely, the only record that's been set is on the defensive side with Cody Atkinson already after nine games breaking the record for most tackles in a season. By now, he probably has 175 or six for the season. His nearest competitor is about 20 tackles behind. Now, the one that really caught my eye, rushing touchdowns for a career. Before three or four years ago, Charles, do you remember John Handy? Yes. He had the record at 31. And then Red Horace, in his three-year career, broke it, shattered it, disintegrated it, more than doubled it with 68 for his career. Man, that's crazy. That's a record that will never be broken, except Caden Dixon has 62. He's six touchdowns away yep. with at least a half and another you know, playoff game to go. That It's going to be difficult to catch him, but he could. I mean, that's that's rarefied air. Yes, it is. Um, I don't know. That's That stunned me. And Cash Cross is about 300 yards away from the most career yards of a quarterback. Guess yep. who currently has the record? I got this one. Kyle Parks. Kyle Parks. But in Another avid listener of, and watcher of the – Is uh, Kyle Parks. Kyle Parks. So, I think he still has his record now. So, Kyle, think... congratulations. You, it's, it's within – Yeah. It's, you're in jeopardy, but Kyle, but I, I give it 50-50. Kyle, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Parks and uh, the Evans brothers made me believe in miracles when I was in high school. That's Just right. Throwing that out there. All right. I'm going to have to go do my band job, but thank you for letting me play. All right, folks. Again, that's Chris Wallington brought to you by the Sign Shop. We're here from the Sign Shop, and we'll be right back as the Aurora Concepts Halftime Show continues here live from the ranch. What is the best way to communicate to the people that you want to communicate to? You put a sign in your yard. It says, vote for me or vote for my friend. It says, congratulations. It says, happy birthday. It can even say, I love you. For the most important messages, it's the sign shop. Find them on Cascade Drive, the sign shop, Center, Texas.
Everybody, welcome back to the Roar Concepts Halftime Show. It's the Center Band brought to you by Deb's Boutique. And now it's time for our patented, we started it, sorry, Carthage, uh, play-by-play the, by the Center Band by Keaton Wallington. Hi. You know, I, I've been getting a lot of odd jobs here on the on the, on the the broadcast. And the Batters Law Firm scoreboard, that's that's one that I that I enjoy doing. But this is one that I love doing. Yes. Bringing the play-by-play for the band. Right now we're looking at the twirlers. Um, again, the twirlers are one of the two or three hardest working groups on campus. It's the in order to be a twirler, you have to also be um, a member of the band. So these are people who put in a ton of work with the band, and then they put in extra work to be twirlers. So that's who's on the field right now. The Center Rough Rider band is currently has currently wrapped up a very successful season of marching. They were able to go all the way to the state contest where I think they placed ninth or 10th. I don't have that exact number. I think we were 10th. 10th. And top 10 in the state for military marching bands. Nothing to sneeze about. That's very, very impressive. Um, Again, the military marching contest uh, used to be both marching and core bands. Um, They noticed that the scoring system was a little bit skewed for core bands. So military marching bands split off with its own contest for UIL rather recently. And center has been right up there in the in the top of the contest since it happened. So, very commendable season by the by the band this year. You can see, or I don't know, is this the eighth grade night where the eighth yes, graders sir. march? I believe that's right. The uh, every year, uh, what the center high school band does is they'll um, one of their last weeks they will um, kind of like invite the eighth graders to come out and. Just get them a little taste of what the rest of their high school career is going to be like. I remember that day vividly. It was the most nervous I had been up to that point, and all we did was walk out and play a song and walk back. But um, just now that the season's over, we get to look forward to what's to come. Um, we'll be looking at a lot of the new bright faces who will be, you know, carrying the not carrying the ball but carrying the horn in the future, and that's what we have to look forward to um, in the years to come. But I don't actually see that many eighth graders on I don't, the field. Well, I'm not, that's what I thought. I don't, this looks like a much smaller group of mm-hmm. – is it like just the seniors? No, this is the entire band. Okay. It looks like they're going to – they're just going to do the drill. I guess the eighth graders are staying in the stands and not marching with them. Um, if that's the case, special treat. This is the, uh, the tenth place state military marching band uh, for the state of Texas in 4A. So, it's an encore presentation. Uh, yes, an encore, if you will. See if we can do our best to get that massive sound captured for you. Precision Fanfare by Ray. Um, Chicago World's Fair March is the second one that they'll be playing. I get into this a lot, but this is the first of three marches that will be performed by the marching band. Again, something to watch here now that the season is over. Are they willing to concentrate and focus and keep in step even though there's nothing to continue, uh, no competition to continue for? I believe they will. Oh, yeah, me too. One thing that the Center Rough Rider Band does after every game is we spend Monday watching film. Um, so there's nothing quite ner- as nerve-wracking as being on the field marching. Oh, yeah. But the second most nerve-wracking thing for me was knowing I had messed up and knowing it was going to be shown to the entire band on Monday. Hey, Which just like it in football, yep. the, the eye in the sky does not lie. The eye sees all. And I had a week where I, I messed up, Mr. Shires. Yeah. That little that laser pointer just focused on me. It was it was tough. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So what is this march? 
I think it's the Chicago World's Fair. I remember playing it when I was a sophomore, maybe. It's one of our favorites to play over here at center. And this is the first kind of set piece. Um, it's that figure eight infinity sign, however you want to look at it. Um, it's impressive because it's able to go almost, almost 60 yards from end to end. Pretty full 60 yards too, it's not just a single file line. And a little bit of extra commentary from the girl sitting down yes. right in front of us. Show you that we're not we're not making it up. They the fans love the band too. Second march right here. This is a little bit, almost a third of the way done to the drill. Usually for the second march, you want something a little bit more intense. Uh, right. You want the whole drill to be like a one of those diagrams you draw for a plot. You know, a right rising here. action, a climax, things like that. And right now, this is the rising action. Again, people walking in different directions, playing in different directions. Very difficult to keep that echo from affecting you. So yeah. you've got to be, got to be feeling that downbeat. Is that like an kind of a math guy to put these drills together. Oh yeah, no, I, I got to see one of the chart books when I was in school and I'm so glad I only was one person and not in charge of the entire drill. It looked complicated. Counter march on the 20 yard line. Counter marches are tough because everyone for one beat eventually at some point will be facing the, uh, the press box. Yeah. So if you have a trombone or a tuba, you got to make sure you don't hit the person beside you. Yes. And knock them out. It's always a danger with, like you said, the trombone, especially if they really snap that turn. Yeah. <laughs> got to be aware. All right. This is the chorus of the second march. Um, if you have anything to show off, this is when you do it. And on the 50-yard line, we have Damian Horton again. The is he a senior this year? Finally he a is. senior. Of course, the big band is doing a flying V mm -hmm. while Damian is doing his solo. That solo, by the way, is supposed to be played by a piccolo. Right. We do it with a tuba, baby. Yeah, the fact that it's with a tuba. It's insane. That's just the, the best way to put it. It's been a treat having him perform. We'll, we'll certainly talk to him maybe in basketball season, but we always like to talk to Damien a couple times a year. Yeah, he's a, he's a character. <laughs> yeah, I mean that in the best way possible, by the way. Yes, of course. And so here they come with the big sound. Big triumphant, closing it out. This is when you, I mean, you still need to be balanced, but this is about blowing the socks off of the people watching. Um, Rough Rider Band uniquely suited to do that. And folks, that is the pride of Shelby County, the award-winning center high school marching band brought to you by Deb's Boutique. We're here from Deb's Boutique as we get ready to see the sweethearts of Shelby County next.
bulletin, 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 bulletin. Bounds Insurance and Center. Protecting families and institutions for more than 50 years. Now Buster and Carol and the staff are proud to bring you Shelby County Sweethearts, the Center High School Chaparrales. The Bounds family has several generations of students involved with the Chaparrales, including this year's captain. Bulletin, bulletin, bulletin. When it's time for quality insurance or the Center Chaparrales, it's Bounds Insurance and Center. All right, folks, there's the... Center High School Chaparrales out on the field. The officers are being announced at the moment. The uh, When I was in high school, the Chaparrales were always considered to be, like I said, uh, one of the hardest working uh, groups on campus. That obviously has stayed, remained the same over the last couple of years. The fact that they have a different drill every week and are also participating students in high school, and a lot of them are also in the band, yes. it just shows you that work ethic. It shows you the ability there. Just the, just the passion that they have for this type of, uh, this type of performance. Just hats off to them in every way, shape, or form. Right, you're right. It is a different performance every week. Sometimes it's a kick performance. This is a, pom a, a palm performance, and the, the songs are different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing that they do all that stuff. They're able to do that right in the middle of the fall when the most is going on with football, traveling for different sports and stuff. So, just really impressive. Really fun to watch them perform, Keith. I, I agree. Just there's so many of them. The chaparrales have grown so much since they were founded. When I was in high school, there were about 15, and now there's close to 30. It just shows you this is an organization that that's is right. popular and people want to be a part of. Of course, that's brought, the chaparrales brought to you by Bounds Insurance. We're here from Bounds. We'll come back with our Borders Poultry Supply up close and personal where uh, Chris Wallington sat down with quarterback Cash Cross. Yes, not only am I looking for good insurance, but my grandson's making one of those rock and roll gospel albums. I was wondering if you could find me a good place for insurance and a place for him to record his project. Fortunately, you just described Buster Bounds and Bounds Insurance and Center. People are watching this at halftime of the Brownsboro game, so you have nine games behind you. What was the high point of the season for you? Being Dangerfield. Okay. Why? Why Dangerfield? Because they was up 28. That's true. Right, it's true. You had to come from way behind and, and, and did it well. What's the low point? Uh, the two game losing streak. Yeah. Okay. When you um, look ahead to the playoffs, you've been through it before. Is there a difference in intensity in both practice and game when you're in the playoffs? Yes, you got to uh, both practice and play harder. Okay. Can you remember a, 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 the moment in your career where you were in the playoffs and you went, oh, this is different? Obviously. Okay, I guess so. Yeah, that whole thing was intense. Yeah, I felt like I needed to go do some push-ups as a broadcaster. As you look past your um, high school career. What are you thinking about in college? Uh, going to play football. Do you have any idea where, any any leads? Beaumont. Okay, Beaumont. Mm -hmm. And Caden said Arizona, you said Beaumont. There's a lot of differences there. Yeah. Beaumont is by like center. Yeah, that's right, except for hotter. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, man, good luck with that. Thanks. All right, but here's the kickoff. They didn't wait to get the TV timeout they did. situation. They just did what they were going to do. But they do that in cartridge. They do that because Larry Allen is on the call, and they don't mess with Larry. We need to get up to the Larry Allen level. <laughs> well, the Shelby Sadie's main kick opening kickoff of the second half from the Riders to the Brownsboro Bears. It ends up in the end zone, and it'll be a touchback to the 25-yard line where the Bears will start. Riders lead the Bears 24-14. We had a 26-14 game, but a safety for the Riders was called back because of a penalty uh, because the Riders, apparently what they said is we lined up over the in the wrong place. So, first and 10 for the Bears. Handoff. And as Chris told you, the starting quarterback for the Bears is out of the game and um, probably just as a precaution. And, and uh, because the Bears are not playing for any anything playoff no. following this week, then it's, it's nice to get this young man, uh, Dylan Downey. Uh, uh, I was about to say he's getting him some practice, but he's a senior. So, huh. Downey. In the shotgun now after a three-yard pickup on first down. <clears throat> Second down with the back standing next to him. Receiver either way. Calls for the snap. He's going to take off and run to the left. Now turn it upfield. Grabbed around his waist and tackled it around the 29 or 30-yard line and a nice tackle by the Riders. Mayo tackled him from behind, and then number 21, Clint Atkinson, finished him off from, well, from in front. Knocked Folks, we need a pop of pepper. We got one to pop? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's some. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm nursing mine from the first half. <laughs> well, somebody needs to pop one. But I'll, I'll be one. symbolic with you. Third down and five for the Bears. And they are going to continue to work the clock throughout the rest of this game. We need to pop this pepper game. before this play so we so can. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. Pop it. And you there do. It. Okay. Third so down and five. Stop them. Snap, quarterback back. So and it's a screen. screen. Bam! Flags everywhere. Quick tackle by the Riders by Cody Atkinson. And uh, the flags come in. Could not defend it better. Y the, your front group goes after the quarterback. Holding against Brownsboro. So it's going to be uh, so almost certainly declined. No, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, cause it's that was a third down play. Mm -hmm. I think the officials are going to – I think Coach is going gonna, is gonna to decline it and, and make it fourth down. Okay. But the, fourth the, down, fella. the rush came after him, right? Fourth down. Yeah, since we declined it fourth down. Yeah. The rush came after him, and oftentimes the the screen pass gets past the rush, and then the runner has the, the receiver has the ball and goes. But the second wave of defense came and just eliminated the receiver on that. Perfectly done. Fourth down and five, and the punter comes in. <clears throat> you know, you think at some point Brown, Brownsboro is going to be aggressive and just go for it, but fourth down and five, deep in your own or at your own 30-yard line, probably not. So punter comes in, punter standing at the 19-yard line. Now they've had a couple of high snaps. This one's right on the money. And the Riders get close to blocking it, but the punter gets it away. It's going to be a short punt, and it's going to bounce and go out of bounds. In fact, the Riders will have the ball right around midfield. Yeah, that's what you want. You know, you it, at halftime, you talk about the importance of the first drive. Defense did their job, three and out. Now the offense has to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe the punter had to get rid of it pretty quickly there because the riders were pressing in on him. Yeah, it was and a two-step punt. It yeah, yeah, had to get it away quickly. So, riders have the ball at midfield, first and ten. First possession of the second half of the riders. They lead 24-14. Cash cross in at shotgun. Snap, turn, throw. Oh. And uh, Dixon. <laughs> Behind the line of scrimmage, ball in and out of his hands. He puts his head in his hands and says, man, yeah. I should have had that. And there you go, Shires. That, that's that that's what I was afraid of when we didn't, yeah. we didn't see that play a whole lot. He may not be a, a natural catcher. All right, second down. That's all right. He's a pretty natural runner. And they're going to throw it this time to Bellin, who does catch it behind the line of scrimmage, and then is tripped up Good after play. a couple of yards. And so it will bring up third down and eight, third down and seven. A very difficult tackle by their backup quarterback, Dylan Downey. He had to – he was by himself, no one behind him. If Belling gets by him, it's a big game. All right. Third down and seven for the Riders. They're already in the <coughs> – 
<coughs> in the Bears' territory. Cross is going to keep it, come around the left-hand side, looking to turn the corner, and there's nowhere to go. So the Bears not letting up on defense and force the Riders into fourth down at the Bears' 47-yard line. Yeah, that play didn't go like it was supposed no. to. He had two receivers close to us on the right-hand side of the field that looked over the coaching staff and were like, what happened? It was both Bellin and number 11, Jeremiah Ratcliffe. Right. So, the Riders bring in the punter. After three and out here uh, with 9.46 here in the third quarter. And the Riders kind of all looking to the sidelines. And, oh, they're bringing her, waiting for somebody to come on the field. And two, one, and the Riders are either going to have delay a game or – and – or did they call a timeout? Nope, delay a game against the Riders, which is fine on a punt. Yeah. I mean, you hate that, but. Yeah, but we're, uh, we're okay with that. Our yeah. punter just needs the extra space. <laughs> Thank you to JBI Insurance for bringing you Rough Rider football. He, they will also bring you Rough Rider basketball, soccer, tennis, baseball, softball, the whole nine yards. Thank you very much. JBI Insurance and Joe Bill Mattire. So the reason the Riders were looking at the sidelines, they didn't have enough people on the field and had ones come scrambling in late. Delay a game penalty, five-yard penalty, but a nice punt that's going to, Riders are going to down just inside the 15-yard line. So that's where Brownsboro will have their second possession of the second half. And meanwhile, it's a 10-point game as the Riders lead 24-14 with nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. You heard some scores at halftime and a lot of interesting games going on here tonight, but the Battle of the Atoyak is a close game between Garrison and Timpson. That's the game. I mean, that's, I'm glad it's close. I'm glad it's dramatic. Yep. Good for everybody. First down and 10 for the Bears. <clears throat> Bears start at their own 12-yard line. Backup quarterback Downey is in <clears throat> for the rest of the game. Two receivers left, one to the right, one back. Snap. And a little bit of stutter step, flag in the backfield, and, and yeah, the running back took off before the uh, snap was made, so false start, first down and 15. Shires, the Bears still have in their starting running back. Yes, I mean, but we're able to focus in on that, on that player, and the quarterback and it doesn't have the best arm. He, you know, he scrambles. Let's we'll see if we can't get some pressure on him here. First and 15, and Downey is going to keep it and run. The backup quarterback is across the 15 wow, nice and up game. to about the 18-yard line. Yep, nice pick up and, oh, what, four yards short of the first down? So it'll be second down. Second least, down and three. Yeah, second and three. And yeah. so he picks up 12 yards on that play. He does. Big run. And you know how if you ever play fantasy football, you don't want to start anybody or have anything important the last week of the season because crazy things happen? In the fourth quarter, Bullard and Van are tied at 14. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Huh. All right, on second down and three, handoff, and Campbell has it. He's not going to get it. Trying to find some place to go. Had the to get around the corner. The defense is there to shut it down. It's going to bring up third down. Almost got around that corner. He's, uh, they're going to mark him first oh, down yardage. So I guess he got just enough around to get that extra yard. I thought they'd stopped him short. I thought he was two or three yards short on the on the play, but I guess he got some forward progress. It's also happening on the far side of the field from us. Hard to sometimes That's hard to see that. Yeah. Ball at the 22-yard line. First and ten. And a new set of downs for Brownsboro here in the third quarter. Two receivers left, one to the right. And quarterback's going to keep it. Looks like he wants to design got him. run. Mayo. The entire rider defense piles on him after Mayo initially gets his hands on him. Mayo. And Mayo. there's going to be a loss on that play, and they're going to mark it actually back at the 16-yard line. I thought he had – I didn't think that – well, anyway, no matter what I thought. Big loss. Mayo. Uh, Mayo was there, and then it was a posse of – Rough rider. That's well, true. It was jailbreak. It was the right. Virtually everybody got in on that and and crushed the rank the quarterback. He, again, that was going to be another uh, quarterback draw. Second down and sixteen. After a loss of six yards on the play, 
Seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Riders lead 24-14. Snap, quarterback quickly throws, hitch pass oh, behind nice. the line of scrimmage. Receiver has it, trying to make a move. Flag comes in. Cody a Atkinson penalty. on the stop. Okay. They don't want to stop it around the 21, 22-yard line. It's a good play. Probably Cody a holding. Made, <clears throat> Cody made a good stop. They almost got back to the original line. Holding penalty. I'll move them back again. Holding against the Bears. And the poor old Bears, I know the offensive line is bound to feel extra pressure. You know, we, we don't have our starting quarterback in, so everything has to go perfectly. And so the extra pressure on the line. Yeah. And so far, I've responded that, with two holding penalties on this drive. Yeah, that was probably not the offensive line. That was probably one of the receivers. Oh, you think? There. Mm. Yes. Suck it down in what, 25? Something like that? Yeah, second and very long. Yeah, yeah, second and long for the Bears. And they are inside their own 10-yard line. On second down, three you receivers to the right. Quarterback looks to throw to the right. And oh, wow. it's a hitch behind oh, the line of wow. scrimmage. The receiver can't hold on to it. Yeah. Now, a defender came flying by. Could have got his hands in there a little bit. I, the I, ball comes loose. I kind of think he did. You're right. Disrupted. Hey, it, it, just so far away from, from my eyes, maybe it was disrupted. But it, I thought he caught it and looked up field and just forgot just to it. secure it and dropped it. Yeah, one of those two things happened. Either way, I don't think he was going to get a lot of yards because the defense was converging. But third and literally – Forever, they got to get to the 32, yeah. and they're they're parked at the eight. Man, if they try to throw it here, it could we could get our safety back. So third down, about 25, and Downey looking, scrambling, moving his feet, throwing out wide to the right side, has we, a we defender there, one. Cash Cross, with the ball interception. Now working his defenders, trying to yeah. make some place to go, <laughs> and finally just scrambles out of bounds, right around the 50 yard line, and Not the Riders will take over. That's a pretty good punt, though, yeah. for them. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So the Riders take over near midfield with 635 here in the third quarter, and the Riders lead 24-14. Actually, probably it would have been more fortuitous if they just dropped that one and waited for the punt. I'm going to go take a sack scam or something and get a break. Yeah. All right, so the Riders are going to take over again on just, just inside the 50-yard line, just on the positive territory. So they're going to spot the ball. The Riders will have it at the Bears' 48-yard line. Referees are visiting now and talking to one of the players. And Mr. Whitehead, that's, another, that's kind of odd. They're down there visiting and yep. talking. And You know what I'm going to do in the morning? I'm going to get up and watch the sunrise come up, and I'm going to drink some coffee out of my uh, my center downtown center square coffee cup that I got from Shell Mooney. At no, that's morning. good. Yeah, it's, it makes the coffee better. Yeah, it sure does. Are you going to watch the sun come up? I'm going to watch the sun come up with my with my Moody Emporium coffee cup. First down oh, that's Riders. a wide open touchdown, baby. First down, Riders. Pass, deep pass to Bellin, who is all alone at the 15-yard line and on in for the wow. score on a 48-yard pass play on first down from the Riders. For the folks on the radio that didn't get to see that, when, that was the textbook uh, play action pass. As they all bit on the on – the, uh, the running back and Bellin broke free and there so was that's what nobody was. back there. Everybody bit and it was just yeah. It was that was his, and he almost fell down. Right. <laughs> with no one when around. You're that him. wide open. Fernandez comes in to add one point. The kick is up and it's good. And so we do have a 31-14 ball game and you're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. <laughs> 
When you need supplies for your poultry farm, remember Borders Poultry Supply on Highway 87 South here in Center. The folks at Borders Poultry are ready to help you with parts for your brooders, chore time and rock cell feeders, and new drinker systems. Do you need a new incinerator? Are you ready for a new litter barn or compost shed? Do you need some updates on your poultry farm? Call 598-6297. Borders Poultry Supply, builders of quality poultry houses. All right, another Shelby Savings Bank kickoff here. Fair caught by the Brownsville Bears. They're going to take over on about the 28-yard line, Rob Payne. So we just heard our Borders Poultry Supply commercial. Tell us about, Rob, the, uh, I mean, how long have you been? Y'all been in the new facility now? Uh, going on three years. Has it been three years? Uh, or is it two? Two. 23, 20, yeah, two years. Right. Yeah, so y'all got all kinds of stuff out there for oh plumbing and hardware and and poultry supplies and uh, now this time of year pipe wrap and heaters so yeah yep wrap those pipes folks that's it it's time first and ten for the Bears right around the twenty eight yard line they're gonna hand off pretty quickly Campbell has it and there is nowhere to go Ryder defense is as stingy as ever yeah pushing them back pushing them back way back. <laughs> So first down becomes second down, and the referees are not acting like they want to move that stick anywhere. No gain on the play. Six minutes to go here in the third quarter. They're going to give them, yeah, right at no gain. Yep. Cody Ackes again on the tackle. But that's that? hard to figure out because there were so many riders there. Second down, out of the shotgun. Quarterback Downey calling for the snap, stops. They all look at the sidelines. Oh, probably about three, was it two or three weeks ago, we had our defensive coordinator on the Rick Meeks show, and it was a just an incredibly interesting conversation. We well, had they just did get that off right as the clock went to zero. That's be another interception. The quarterback hauls off and throws it, and as Shire, Mr. Shire says, it's an interception. It's all the way. And there is nowhere. So, number three for the center rough riders, Jermaine Hunter, with an interception around midfield. As the backup was, quarterback just kind of hauls off well, and throws a well, ill-advised yeah. pass. Well, that's because number 14, Jamarian uh, Smith, Jamarian Smith, a junior defensive end, just came in. And it, uh, what was the guy that was for the Raiders called the Stork? What was that guy? <laughs> I, <can't remember. laughs> I, mean, he, I mean, that's what he did. He came down on top of him like, the, like that guy, Ted Hendricks. Hendricks. Like Ted Hendricks used to do. All right, so the referees are conversing again, and now they're going to let the riders uh, kick the extra point, but it looks like they may want to visit with us. Mr. White Hat. Okay, so the the, so, the Purple Rain song played, but it was a little bit premature. There's a penalty there. So there's a what a penalty after the riders got the interception. The points come off the board, and the Riders, after the penalty, will have the ball at the 45-yard line on the Bears' end of the field. Yeah, you're right, Chris Wallington. There, we have some gold towels out there, but they look too much like terrible towels for me to be comfortable with. Yeah, that's a – Maybe we should have some purple towels. Yeah, I like the gold towels, but, yeah, the, the Steelers' terrible towels, uh, no good. All right. First and ten for the Riders, cross and the shotgun, back to pass, looking, looking, looking. Throw goes to throw the ball, and it's up in the air. In fact, cross is hit just as he lets the go of the ball, and it's incomplete in the end zone, and there is a flag on the field. We're going to see if it's a holding or a penalty, or is it going to be a you know roughing the passer? Because I think they whack came in the head. Good. Yeah, that was, a, like I said, he was hit immediately uh, and right up in the upper area. So let's see what Mr. Whitehat says. Oh, okay. Oh. So it's a holding call on each team. They offset and will repeat the down. All for naught. All for naught. So first down again from the 45-yard line. And the Riders going deep right that time, going for it all. Had the touchdown, the defensive touchdown called back on a penalty, first and 10. And on a 
end around. The Riders hand off. And uh, oh, was our backup Edwards? running back number six? Yeah, number six. It looked like I thought it was five, but it's number six, Barnes. Yes. Okay. So on the end around, Barnes takes it and has a nice pickup. That's uh, Brandon Barnes, and he has about nine of the ten yards he needed. Cross on second down short. Oh, he's wide open. Throws there it. He is. Has a man touchdown. There's a flag in the backfield. Oh, oh my, there's dog gone. <laughs> the First of all, that's the second time the Rough Riders have been in the. Hold on, hold it, Rough Riders. Now the problem is it takes second and one to second and eleven. Uh, but Wilburn was wide open and Cash just dropped that one right into the bucket, right where it needed to go. Perfect. I mean, I mean, he threw the ball in the air because I mean, Wilburn caught it about halfway. You know, the R, the Rough Riders, on the right. R, and and so and that was a fifty. That was probably a 55-yard ball in the air. <laughs> yeah. Second down and 11. And in this drive at the interception, the score was called back on a penalty. And now a reception in the end zone is called back. Second down 11 for the Riders from the 45. Handoff to fake the handoff to Dixon. Ball is thrown out and caught. And that was Edwards, <laughs> Edwards out at the 40. And then. Inside to the 35-yard line. And where did Edwards start? He lined up at receiver? Yeah. I, was, I like that play. We have Edwards and Barnes split out wide to the right. So Ray we're Jones first down. Right, we're Quick catch snap. Him. Ray Jones first down. Ah. Ball is thrown out and intended for number five, Edwards, and it's incomplete, second down and ten. We, we caught them. They were not set that time. They're, they were trying to get some substitutions in, and we made it difficult. And snapped it, but were unable to take advantage of that. And just unable to quite get his hands on it right there, down there, those receivers to the, the right of the formation. So Edwards and Ratcliffe split on the wide to the right. Now they move Edwards over with Wilburn on the left-hand side. And Cross is looking to the left, looking to the left, moving to the left, throwing to the left, looking for somebody. The Got him. Zone, and right Perfect. over the right shoulder to Lance Wilburn in the end zone. Finally, we got that touchdown after the third try, and there's no yellow laundry on the field. So does that tie the – That ties him with with Evans, our best athlete last year. You remember his name's Chris, but what did everybody call him last year? Evans, our our, our Evans star last year? Oh. If I hadn't asked you, right? Yeah, yeah I'll think of it here in a second, yes. Mar Mar. Mar Mar <laughs> Evans had 12, and now so does Wilburn. Extra point is up and good. It's a 38 14 ball game here in the third quarter, 4 12 on the clock, and you're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. So, Billy Don, tell us about Brookshire Brothers. Well, they got just about everything. Got a good produce section, a fine meat market, and all that chicken. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And the farmers is great, and the people there make it worthwhile. They always got specials if you pay attention. And that manager, he's a nice fella. And the thing is, you can shop at Brookshire's day or night. A lot more night after daylight savings. Brookshire Brothers Center. McAdams Propane Company is your East Texas propane provider. Josh McAdams represents the third generation of a family that has kept clean, efficient propane running to the facilities and farms of the area, as well as to the outdoor kitchens that make life fun. They also have the supplies that make an outdoor kitchen possible. Aware of the community, they have provided a luncheon for the first responders of our area. From the beautiful outdoor kitchen to the... All right, folks, here's the kickoff by Shelby Savings Bank. It's going to bounce, and it's going to go out of out of bounds. Steven, that's a short kickoff that goes to bounces to the 20. Yeah. And then takes a bad bounce and goes out of bounds. Of course, that's a yellow flag penalty on that. <laughs> and so the uh, the uh, Bears will get nice field position. That's and right. we, we announced to our audience that Lance Wilburn, with 12 touchdown receptions this season, just tied the Rough Rider single season record with Marmar Evans. He also just tied the career record with Octavius Evans who, as you know, went on to a four-year career in the Division One. Um, Who's now head basketball coach in Kirbyville. at Kirbyville. So, I mean, that's rarefied air, and there's plenty of time left for Lance to break both of those now. All he needs is one more, and he'll have, the, he'll have that record by himself, two records. So, first and 10 from the 30-yard line after the 
out of bounds. Shelby Savings Bank kickoff. Handoff for the Bears, and they'll get five yards on that play. Four to five yards. It'll be second down. But now the Rough Riders are ahead 38-14. Am I they right? Are. They are. 38-14 yes. and with four minutes to go here in the quarter. And at some point you might start thinking about, I, I don't really know that I want Clint uh, Adkinson in the game. Mayo, you know, all it takes is one bad step, and you, you get an, an ankle twinge that – may or may not swell up, may or may not be ready. So I, I don't know when that's going to happen. But right now, the starting defense looks like they're in the game. Up okay. second down and five. Backup quarterback Downey for the Bears takes a snap and hands the ball off to Campbell, number three, who's got the first down and rumbling towards the middle of the field and is about two yards short of midfield. Going back to I mean, basics, that was working well for them earlier on. We have an update <laughs> on the Battle of Toyak from Veronica Berry. Okay. The, uh, Veronica Berry, Jeff Batter scoreboard. 28-19, <laughs> to 19, Timpson leads with 455 to go in the ballgame, and Timpson has the football. Okay. So, uh, you know, they're looking to maybe put the two driver score down game. on the coffin with, a, with a, a score. Meanwhile, first down for the Bears. Two yards shy of midfield at their own 48. Snap, handoff, Campbell. Campbell One. breaks through into the secondary with a nice run, but then when he goes down, the ball comes loose. Was he down? Yeah. I believe so. Oh, no. The ball, I thought the ball came I out. I thought so, too, but yeah. it's it's good. And it They have something with Campbell. They, yep. They've gotten big chunks off all throughout the game from this guy. So. Kayla Mosby on the tackle there to limit the damage. About an 18-yard run from Campbell right then. The ball is just inside the 35-yard line. We know that they're not going to be able to throw the ball particularly effectively, so we really need to be keying on Campbell. Yeah, close the run down. So they've got two receivers to the left, and they're going to give it to Campbell again. Campbell hits the middle. Ryder stiffen up in the middle. And uh, still, Campbell has five, maybe six yards. Still good for five. Yeah. We asked Coach about that whole issue about resting his starters. Would you be more inclined to do that tonight? Oh, no, sir. We're still going at it. I mean, they're, they're turning the scoreboard on, so we're going to go play the game. Our job tonight is, is competing and beating Brownsboro. And, um, you know, if we were fortunate enough to get to a certain spot, then we'll look at some other things. But, but right now, our, our number one thought is beating Brownsboro and whatever we have to do to, to, to win the game tonight. There you have it. He's living by that. Second down and four. There we go. Nice play. Hand there off, and the Riders shut that down after a yard or two. Captain Gregory. Well done. So, number 14, Jamarian Smith. Oh. And, and actually, it. I don't think they moved the ball at all. So, third down and four. That's Greg Gregory's number 15. He yes. Is. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Jamarian Smith. Good play. It was Smith, and it was also, I thought Mayo might have been in there, too. For a couple guys on that tackle. On third down, third down and four. Downey with the snap, rolling right, going to keep it, going to try to run to the 30, to the 25. Downey close to the 20-yard line, maybe just inside, and a first down for the Bears. Ray Jones first down and right, knocking on the door of the State Farm red zone, Chris Mayfield State Farm. And we're a minute and 30 seconds away from the third quarter break and the third quarter batters law firm scoreboard with Keaton Watlington to check on the Battle of the Toyak and others. A lot of important and interesting games going on. Ball sitting on the 20-yard line, first and 10 for the Bears, who have just eased this ball right down the field and had a nice drive for the Bears. Two receivers to the right-hand side, one back. Snap, give, Campbell has it coming right up the middle. Campbell has had some really nice runs on this drive. And actually, that I believe that's number 10 that ran the ball that time for them. Right. Uh, Grayson Adams in for, on, for a little bit, giving Campbell a breather. And he ran up in there and got gobbled up by big number 57. After Brandon only West. two yards. After only two yards. So it'll bring up second down and eight. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Snap, give again. Oh, yeah. It's Adams and immediately tackled, brought down. And I see number 14 sitting right there. Yes. Uh, Smith, who's had several key tackles on this drive against the Bears. 
and it'll be third down and five. Smith slowed him, and then a number of Rough Riders came in there and finished him off. And it looks like we're going to have a quick break on the field. So I think we should probably take care of a little business. Let's take care of business. We'll be right back. Covington Lumber and Building Supplies is in the capable hand of a third generation of Covingtons. For shingles for your roof, to carpet for your floors, to feral Calhoun paint for the walls, bathroom fixtures and everything in between, Covington's has it as well as all the lumber you can shake a stick at. Lumber for your home or for other fun projects. You find it all at Covington's. This is a Whataburger table tent. An orange and white trophy for your made to order burger. It means we cook your meal up fresh. And don't get up, because we'll bring it right to you. So if you're looking to sit down and celebrate the fact that you left it all on the field, we've got your number. Whataburger, just like you like it. Oh, that came Everybody, out. welcome back. It's, we see the Brownsboro band here. Is there? Not sure what they're doing over there, but okay. We now we're gonna have we're gonna go back with a, another timeout. Do we want to go ahead and okay? The the quarter has ended, so I'm still going to commercial. Let's go ahead and go to the batters scoreboard where we have a final in the battle of the Atoyak. Oh really? That's in, that's good to know. I don't have oh, I got to give him my headset, <laughs> uh, Mr. Shark. He needs a headset. All right, so now, here, now let's try this again. We'll go to the batter scoreboard. It's hilarious. He gave me the headset and then muted it. <laughs> why, why would you give me the headset and then mute the headset? It's almost like you don't want to hear my Make beautiful, my beautiful. Where's the beautiful, batter scoreboard? Beautiful, there we beautiful, go. Beautiful, beautiful. Batter scoreboard time. The Shelbyville Dragons and the West Sabine Tigers are engaged in a sprinting match. Two minutes left in the fourth quarter. The score is 62 to 34 in favor of the Tigers. Tina Hall ahead of the Overton Mustangs, 35 to 21. The Battle of the Atoyak has come to a conclusion. The Timpson Bears beat the Garrison Bulldogs, 35 to 26. San Augustine Wolves, 42. The Grapeland Sandys, 28, and that's the final score. The Eagles versus the Eagles. The Eagles are ahead, 21 to 13. The Eagles, good for the Eagles. The Bullard Panthers are playing the Van Vandals, currently tied 21-21 with eight minutes left in the fourth oh, wow. quarter. And the Gilmer Buckeyes, with 30 seconds left in that game, are ahead um, only 64-6. That's all I have for you. Thanks for having me, guys, again. All right, folks, that's our batter scoreboard. And I believe the, the Colonel and I, Chris Walter, wanted to – all right, let's go back. We'll talk more about that, about who, which Eagle is winning. Third down and four from the 14-yard line, and the – Quarterback Downey is going to take the snap and run to the right to the 10 inside the five yard line and brought down by the rider defense right at the three yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Bears. The problem there, the rider defense was too passive. They see that coming. They need to come up and not, they were, they were kind of absorbing the blocks. They need to, they need to come up and shut that down as it was going. But that's going to bring up a first down and goal at about the, well, the three-yard line. Yep, first and goal from the three for the Bears. Riders have them 38-14 right now. The Eagles versus Eagles, that game actually matters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one district game this week that, that actually still has playoff intentions. And it looks like the quarterback's going to run in. He's going to get in. Downey on a quarterback keeper for three yards out, makes the left-hand corner and runs in for the score. And so it's a touchdown for the Bears here in the – early moments of the fourth quarter. Well, first of all, hats off to Downey. He comes in as the backup quarterback. He has a team that's, you know, picked to beat him to death. And here in the second half, he has rallied his team and right. brought him to a touchdown. Center scored two. Now they've scored one in the half. Well, Downey, who, do, who, who throwing is not his thing, has maximized what he's done on the field and exactly. scored two touchdowns. Extra point attempt by the Bears. Is up and it is good. So the Bears have 21 points and the Riders 38. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDT. Sandy Cox is a good State Farm agent. Just ask Drake, he knows. State Farm agents in general are pretty cool, but Sandy Cox has the answers to your questions. Like what's best for me and for my kids, for my business, for my farm. For all of us in Shelby County, those questions can be answered at Sandy Cox State Farm. 
McAdams Propane Company is your East Texas propane provider. Josh McAdams represents the third generation of a family that has kept clean, efficient propane running to the facilities and farms of the area, as well as to the outdoor kitchens that make life fun. They also have the supplies that make an outdoor kitchen possible. Aware of the community, they have provided a luncheon for the first responders of our area. From the beautiful outdoor kitchen to the important fuel that keeps the engines running, keep your engine running with McAdams Propane Institute. You are watching Northeast Texas Sports Network, the Center Rough Riders versus the Brownsboro Bears, live from the ranch, Center High School Stadium. All right, folks, welcome back. Shelby Saban with kickoff. Again, for the, those of you listening on the radio, Center leads 38 to 21. But Brownsboro is going to kick off. They're going to kick it shallow. The Riders are going to get it. Return it back to the 30, the 35, the 40, to about mm. the 42 for Timothy Johnson is brought down. Excellent return by the Riders. They're going to start. I thought Johnson might break that tackle, but he had a good, the defender had a good handle on his shirt there, Mr. Payne. And a game of, just one observation, a game of short kickoffs. I mean, I don't know what's yeah. up, but it's all of a sudden. They don't want to kick deep to our our returners because of the power of our and speed, but it hadn't been working for kicking short either. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, so for the 42, 43 yard line, first and 10 for the riders here in the fourth quarter, 11, 14 on the clock in the ball game, hand off right straight up the middle. Dixon Dixon's legs continue to move Look at him go as he crosses midfield and down to the opposing 45 yard line. So a 12 yard run by Dixon and it moves the chains for a Ray Jones first down. Boy, he, that was, he had a hole, and that got him four yards, and then he got the rest. So they're going to let Dixon have it again. This time he lowers his head and gets inside the 40 to the 38-yard line for another seven-yard, eight-yard run. Yeah. I'm thinking this is going to be the Dixon showcase on this drive, and then you put him on the bench. I think that might be a good idea. Seven-yard pickup, cross back to pass on second down and three, and had some pressure in the backfield and evaded it. Now going to the end zone. Has Bell in the end zone, but double coverage, and they have knock it away incomplete. And Jakevian Robinson, the tight end, really did a good job of pass blocking. There was a, a Brownsboro rusher that was in the backfield coming, and he just kept pushing him by, just kept pushing him by. And Cash easily stepped up and were able to make that throw. He did, and it was a nice throw. And, and, we have, we and it was right there to what the receiver. Penalty. Just had two penalties. What I mean, a penalty on the play. Defenders. Uh -oh. Of course, our penalties are brought to you by Whataburger. Defensive holding. So first down. Okay. Ten well, yard penalty. The ten yard first variety, down. Yeah. We'll take that. Okay. That's interesting because you know this is the one thing where it's ten yards in high school. It's five, five yards, yards everywhere else. Down yeah. So first down for the Riders inside the thirty. To Ray Jones, first down, courtesy yep. of Whataburger. <laughs> I see we'll what take I did. it. We'll take it. All right. So, Riders. Put a man in motion, fake it to him, and now cross back to pass. Stops now. He's got some pressure. Defender fell down. Still some pressure. And he stays in bounds. Cross makes a go. move, makes That's another crazy. move. That's now there's video. flags. Where it's probably some kind of holding as flags yep. come in. Or block in the back. The, f Something. the more times as a quarterback in the backfield, you change directions. Yeah. Yep. You're just inviting your offensive linemen and backs. To, for, here, you want a penalty now? No? I'll try it again. Penalty now. <laughs> illegal frontside block. Number 75 on the offense. You say illegal frontside block? Blindside. Blindside. I didn't think there was. Okay. That makes sense. A front side block would be okay. <laughs> I would think, yeah. How you do that? Okay. All right, so illegal block against the Riders. That'll be a 15-yarder, too. And so it is a... Can't do that anymore, Chris. Let's see. Yep, 15-yard penalty Could you against ever do the that? Riders. Oh, yeah, you used to be able to ear hole people all the time, but you got to be able to see, see them. Uh, you have to see the whites of their eyes yeah. instead of the wax of their ears? Yeah, exactly. Okay. First down and 25 for the Riders all the way back to the 46-yard line. And they're going to let 
That's Edwards. Just to be a run play, but Edwards is in to run the ball. He hits the middle with a hit, full and steam ahead. Edwards is a talented runner. You know, he's fast and he sees the hole well, and he's just he not, hasn't been able to play much because of Dixon. Ed, of Dixon, four yard gain, fake. Now that Wilburn, Wilburn has it on the sidelines, and Wilburn stiff arms and gets inside the 35, close to the 30. Yeah, and that's. So two, third and a bunch. two pretty good plays that still hadn't gotten us back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. We're looking at third and 15, right? Yeah, third down and 15 for the Riders. Ball really spotted at the 34-yard line. 9.46 on the clock, and the Riders lead 38-21. Got two plays to get it, even though I'd like to assist the truck. Right, so cross so back, trying to get set. Has a defender still scrambling. He's got him, and the defender brings Cross down <laughs> for a huge loss at That's the 50-yard line. That's what I hate line. that. Yes. Because now we're going to punt. Yeah. If it had been like a no gain, I think we could have brought Hernandez out for a 50-yard. It would have been a 50-yard try, yeah. And and it, even though they caught him at the 50, they had they held him. They had a hold of his jersey, but he, he still wouldn't go down. He was just standing up with his head towards the ground, and finally they, someone else came and knocked him down. He did not want to give that up, but he did. So good defense from the Bears with nine minutes to go. Riders will, will only have a two-touchdown lead. Fourth down and 31. Yes, they are punting. <laughs> but the problem is this game isn't over. That's right. Punter taking his time. Look at that. Letting folks get down the field, and now he punts. It bounces. The Riders are there. What great and They're going to down teams. it inside the 10-yard line, right around the 5-4 yard line. Hernandez says, if they're not going to rush the punt, I'm going to wait until my guys get down there and punt it to them. Which is a great heads-up play. <laughs> At some point, instead just, of just yeah. hearing the punter, oh, well, let me just kick it. Yeah. yeah. Here's some finesse. Yeah. At some point, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't 31, maybe you tuck it and go. Yeah, that's right. Nobody's there. And – Keaton said that's got to be a candidate for play of the game because as as, as you, if you if you just look at it as, as a beautiful play on defense or special yes. teams or offense, that's about as well as a special teams unit can play. Yep. Um, uh, probably won't win it, but it definitely needs to be a nominee. No, but in a close <laughs> game, if you can think like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yep. that's eight, right. Eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Riders lead 38-21, and after a punt – and, a, and ends up a deep ball. The Bears have the ball inside their own five-yard line. And a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. We'll be right back here from the ranch. Hey, y'all got a dirty truck. Well, then take it to Joe's Car Spa for a spa day. At Joe's, they make them shine. And they're standing by to work with the community. They was elected best of Shelby County this year, and it, it's called Joe's, but it probably ought to be called Reed since Reed Grant owns it. So, Billy Don, when it's time for your car or truck to have a spa day, where do you take it? I don't know where. <sighs> have you sustained a bone, joint, work, or sports injury? Problems with mobility or movement? Suffer with pain? Contact Azalea Orthopedics. Our specialists serve patients across East Texas for proven, trusted medical care. You have a choice. Demand Azalea. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back. What's going to happen at uh, post-game show? Wiggins' post-game show is going to be a good one, and it always is on the last home game. We have some folks to talk to. We'll talk to the coaches, we always do. We'll talk to cheerleaders Sidney Newworth and Cambry Bush, and then we'll talk to our players of the game. And I, I look forward to that, and I'll explain why in a little bit. All that's coming up, Wiggins' post-game. Out of the shotgun, in the end zone from the four-yard line, the quarterback takes a snap and runs right straight ahead on and gets about two yards, but anything better than taking a safety. And so it'll be second down and eight. It's possible that I, well, I would like to nominate players of the game that may be players, you know, as for career landmarks. Yeah. Lance Wilburn has not been a difference maker necessarily in winning the game, if that's if we did indeed go on to win, but dang. That's those well, are two pretty big milestones. Yeah. Well, he's gonna be he's gonna be my play of the game nomination for Catching that one, that last touchdown. But, Second uh, down and eight, and a handoff coming left. It's Campbell, and there's really nowhere good. for him to yep. run. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and Mason maybe Mayo. a yard. Mason Mayo got him. Yep. That time the riders finally strung him out and kept him from turning the corner. Yeah, I think Mayo is going to be my nominee. That's okay. what, He's leading the race yeah. right now. As far as the importance of this game, for sure. I mean, he's just – he always makes three or four. It seems like he's made six or seven plays tonight. Third down. 
third down from the Bears, deep in their own territory. We're going to see that quarterback, three. Got quarterback keepers, what I imagine we're going to see here. And nope, we're hand it off. quarterback just hands it off to Campbell, where there is nowhere to Good go. Good defense. And he's tackled. They're going to give him the five-yard line, but it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, he was lucky to get that, fellas, yeah. because uh, we had somebody right when he got the, the ball right at the goal line, and he did a good job of, of escaping that to get back to the five. Rob, they only got one yard combined on that. That's good defense. It good is. set up by good special teams. Right, and our so returner is lined up on the on the 35. Yeah, we're, we're expecting to get some good field position something. here. Punter in the, standing on the E in the end zone. High snap brings it in. It's a it's a good punt. It's a high punt. Who the, fielded at the forty yard line? Oh, he's got a he's and got a Johnson lane. to the twenty. Johnson to the ten and tackled around the ten <laughs> inside the ten yard line. Oh, he was upset. He wanted to get in the end zone, but that's all right. He gets well inside the Chris Mayfield State Farm red zone. Unless there's a flag. There's a flag. There's a flag. Sweet Caroline, there's a flag. There you go, black in the back. All right, during the return, holding. So, holding against the Riders. And so, for the second time tonight on a nice special teams play, we've got the ball with a penalty mm -hmm. coming back. Had a and special just, team score, didn't we? That was a, yeah, that was a scoring Safety. play. Yeah. Um, no, it was a scoring play, a defensive score. Yeah, got taken away. Yeah. Well, was that, that was defense, wasn't it? Teams, yeah. We're yeah. still going to start on the 34-yard the line of Brownsboro. So. Yes, the riders are moved back, though they're not inside the 10. They're up to the 34-yard line. First and 10, 6-11 to go in the ball game. Cross throws the ball to Wilburn, who catches it and then is – Dances Headed and dances. The end zone and I, I'm going to guess they're trying to give him the opportunity to get another touchdown. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. One more. I know he sets the record for uh, touchdowns in a season, and I think he breaks the record for touchdowns in a career. But Division one, Octavius. First down, Riders. Ball thrown to Wilburn again, trying to get him there. Wilburn scrambling, Wilburn scrambling, and move him out of bounds right at the pylon. Mm -mm -mm. Awfully close. So, on first and goal for the Riders, wonder who they're going to try to get the ball to. I wonder. Well, you know, Caden Dixon hasn't scored a <laughs> touchdown today, has he? Uh, and he is six shy of Red Horace's career, I mean, a single no, season record. So He has not scored today. Yeah, he, he, we have one playoff game guaranteed, but that's all we got. So, if he's going to get a shot at his record, he kind of needs one, too. Well, we have time out on the field. We'll take one as well. We'll be right back here with six minutes to go in the game. Center Rough Rider football tonight brought to you in part by Covington Lumber Supply, three generations and still building strong. Ace Hardware, the place for hardware in East Texas. And Brookshire Brothers, they sold their first bag of groceries with the Rough Riders around their first play, 102 years strong. Rough Rider football is brought to you in part by McAdams Propane Company. Gas up your engines with McAdams. Joe's Car Spa. With Joe's, clean is easy. Yard Birds, the finest barbecue right at the city limit sign on Tenaha Highway. And Sandy Cox State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Sandy Cox is there on Tenaha Street. All right, here we go. The Rough Riders are going to try to put it in. They're going <laughs> to they flip it, it to Wilburn, and he gets in. Uh, that doesn't count. There's a that there's a touchdown catch, but I mean. So Wilburn, well, he flips it out to him. Yes. Yes. Is it technically a receiving touchdown? Yes. Yes, it is. It was a forward pass. Correct. I guess so. It's like a shovel pass. <laughs> well, if it is, he just set the record for a single season touching touchdowns at 13. All Got right. What well, a penalty. Wilburn. Post post but there's play. a flag. Post play. All yes. right. Yes. Yeah. I saw you. Before we mark this down, the referees are talking about something on the field, this water penalty. Um, it's going to be post play. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike. I just don't know which way. So they're all Maybe visiting about it. Still haven't made their mind up. Here we go. Mr. Whitehead, he comes over here talking to the coaches. 
Probably means it's on one of ours. Well, 5.52 to go in the ball game, and the Riders lead 38-21. Wilburn into the end zone for a score. That would make it 44. It looks like it's going to count because Wilburn's going over to celebrate. Let's see. So it's a penalty against the Riders, unsportsmanlike. If they've seen anything, they won't do it on the ki on the extra point. They'll take it on the kickoff. The added on the kickoff. Yeah, they're going to take on it the on the kickoff. kickoff. Yeah, because so, we, we don't care. We'll, give us a 30-yard penalty. Right, we we'll, don't care. We'll, we'll kick extra point from anywhere on the field. <laughs> so Wilburn in for the touchdown. The extra point attempt is coming up. And I do apologize to Lance Wilburn's mama. I don't. I think our camera operators, both of them, were asleep, and I'm not sure that we caught it. <laughs> oh no! Well, it it went it went way to the right. Yes. Did you get it? No, it was a. I'm just. We'll see what we'll see what the eye in the sky has to say. All right, for the extra point attempt, Hernandez in cross the holder, snap, good hold, good kick, it's up, and the Riders have. <laughs> 45 points to the 21 for the Bears. And Lance Wilburn sets a record most touchdowns in a season with 13. 13. And that's more than Mar Mar Evans last year, who had the record for all of, what, 10, 11 months. Right. All right, you're tuned to Ryder Football on KDT. Hey, y'all got a dirty truck. Well, then take it to Joe's Car Spa for a spa day. At Joe's, they make them shine. And they're standing by to work with the community. They was elected best in Shelby County this year, and it, it's called Joe's, but it probably ought to be called Reed since Reed Grant owns it. So, Billy Don, when it's time for your car or truck to have a spa day, where do you take it? Now, I don't know where. <sighs> You know that Ace Hardware of East Texas is all the hardware you need, but there's a lot of other things they have too. Fun things for your camping trips. Fun things to wear when you go outside. For the 4th of July barbecue, to the housewarming in the fall, to your Christmas shopping and clothes for all year long, it's Ace Hardware, the helpful place of East Texas. Yeah. Everybody, welcome back to Shelby Savings Bank kickoff, which is going to occur deep in the territory of the Riders because of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the offense for a and, too much of a celebration. And we worked out the record situation. Lance does hold the single season now over uh, Marmar Evans. He is now tied for career touchdowns at 26. Marmar had 28. He's tied with Octavius Evans career-wise for that. All right. The center upriders with a, how about that? That's a heck of a stat. crazy. Yeah. And we already have an all-time on the defense. All right, Shelby Savings Bank kickoff is a deep end over end kick, and they're going to be fielded at the 20, fair caught at the 20 yard line. So they'll have the ball at the 25 with five and a half minutes to go here in the ball game, and the Riders lead 45 uh, 21. It would be a heck of a post game show if our players of the game were Lance Wilburn on offense and then the record holder. Atkinson on defense, but he's a sophomore and it's senior night, so I, I hate to do that, but it would be awfully good to have two season, single season record holders. Yeah. Well, obviously, Wilburn has to be if co player of the game, if not player of the game. Yeah, he's always good. So we'll have to think on that one. We'll also have our Dairy Queen play of the game and something to smile about, although there's a lot to smile about out there in Rough Rider land tonight. Bears late getting all their personnel on the field. I'm not sure they get this snap off, and they just do. Hand off, nowhere to go, and the running back is just forced backwards. Going to lose a little bit on that one. They're going to say lose just one. It'll be second down and 11 for the Bears. And at this point, <laughs> everybody down there is ready to get this over with. Yeah, yeah. Now. And there may be a few seniors on Brownsboro that know this is it, and they, they might be savoring the last moments, but yeah. Maybe so. But, I mean, when you're, well, 413 on the clock, second down and 11. Backup quarterback Downey takes a snap. Quarterback Downey has a snap, going to run it himself, turn, come to the right, and go. the riders stand him up again. 
Number 23. I saw 23. Yeah, Jay, Jack, uh, Jackson Parker. Jackson Parker. Sorry about that. Yeah, so Jackson, another. And he had an upperclassman as well who's had a fine year. All right, so they got, what, four yards on that, five yards. Third down and six. So, and he stayed in bounds. Clock continues to run. What is it, Shires? It's just going to be interesting what they do here if they're going to put the ball in the air. If they're going to, like the Colonel was talking about, y'all didn't miss it. They they really like to go to the wide side of the field. Uh, so we'll see if they don't take off running to the wide side with that quarterback lead. And they got a man in motion, oh, but yes. there's a low snap, and uh, I think the. Man in motion coming around on some kind of sweep does fall on it. Number 21 for the Bears. And so that's going to bring up fourth down, yep. and the Bears are going to be forced to punt. Yeah, I think they were going to run that quarterback lead over to the wide side of the field, uh -huh. just like the Colonel said. But it was just a bad snap. And, and fortunate for Brownsboro, they were bringing that man in motion to kind of be the lead blocker, and he's able to fall on the football. Clock continues to run inside of three minutes now. Riders lead 45-21. Last week of district play. Well, I want something to smile about. I want to see our, I want to see our second, our backup offensive line and backup players come in and go down and score a touchdown. That's what I want to see. Okay. Well, let's see how that works. Timeout. There's a timeout, and we'll take one as well. You're tuned to Rider Football on KDET. So, Billy Don, tell us about Brookshire Brothers. Well, they got just about everything. Got a good produce section, a fine meat market, and all that chicken. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And the farmers is great, and the people there make it worthwhile. They always got specials if you pay attention. And that manager, he's a nice feller. And the thing is, you can shop at Brookshire's day or night. A lot more night after daylight savings. Brookshire Brothers Center. Covington Lumber and Building Supplies is in the capable hand of a third generation of Covingtons. For shingles for your roof, to carpet for your floors, to feral Calhoun paint for the walls, bathroom fixtures and everything in between, Covington's has it as well as all the lumber you can shake a stick at. Lumber for your home or for other fun projects. You find it all at Covington's. All right, buddy, welcome back. Here was a fork <laughs> down and then here's the punt. And it is a high punt, and the riders will field it, put it on the ground, just have to cover it up at the 40-yard line. Yeah. So lost the ball in the lights. It was so high when it finally came down. He mishandled the punt, and Johnson just had to fall on to the 40. The part which at this point of the game, it's okay, but you really, I mean, you, you really want to do things. You don't want to get sloppy right no. now. And they're running the clock. So 45-21, um, uh, three touchdown lead, and. That's about the only bad thing that's happened on special teams apart from penalties, Rob, is him dropping that ball. He still got it back, so no big deal. So first and 10 for the Riders at the 40-yard line. Their side of the field. <coughs> a minute and a half to go in the ball game. I'm yielding my headset to you guys. I'm going to go down and get ready for a great post game. Snap, handoff, coming left, looking for somewhere to go. Just bend over and go down. <coughs> And I'm looking forward and to running that ball. Number 12 for the Riders, Jeremy Bluford. Yeah, we saw him last week. Yeah, freshman. Listed as a freshman. I think he is. So, Historic Wiggins postgame show coming up. I'm going to go down and get ready for you guys. All right, sounds All right. good. Inside of a minute now in the ball game, Riders will take as much time as needed. They're probably going to have to run one more, one more play. This will be the last play. We'll see if they're going to. All right, so Wolf quarterback now. Hand off to Blueford, freshman Blueford. And uh, Wolf to Blueford, and Blueford goes down at the 43-yard line. How about that? We've been seeing Wolf <laughs> at defensive end and up back on the kickoff return. Now we see him playing quarterback, position that his father played here quite well for the uh, Rough Riders back in the – Mid 90s, and that's going to do it, folks, for yep. the ball game. Third down and seven, and the Riders don't have to snap. They're not going to, and so we're going to wind this final district game down to zero. It'll be the end of the game, and not the end of the broadcast. We ask you to stay tuned to the Wiggins post-game show following these messages.
McAdams Propane Company is your East Texas propane provider. Josh McAdams represents the third generation of a family that has kept clean, efficient propane running to facilities and farms of the area, as well as to the outdoor kitchens that make life fun. They also have the supplies that make an outdoor kitchen possible. Aware of the community, they have provided a luncheon for the first responders of our area. From the beautiful outdoor kitchen to the important fuel that keeps the engines running, keep your engine running with McAdams Propane and Center. Northeast Texas Sports Network and Azalea Orthopedics present Northeast Texas Football, the 2023 season. Father, for lunch today, I would like a salad. Father, for lunch, I'd like one of those American oh, no, cheeseburgers. Ice I'm a vegetarian. Ice cream is a burger. That's what I need. Father, Ice go to cream. Oh, when everyone in your family thinks they're royalty, take them someplace where they can all get something good. Dairy Queen. Rough Rider Oil & Lube, they understand two very important things. First, you and your family spend a lot of time in your vehicle, so you need to take good care of that vehicle so it can take care of you. That's the specialty of Rough Rider Oil & Lube, protecting the engine that gets you where you need to go. Second, Rough Rider fans, they deserve the very best, so you're always welcome at Rough Rider Oil & Lube. Welcome to the Wiggins Farms post-game show, live from the ranch where the Center Rough Riders defeat the Brownsboro Bears 45-21 in the final game of the regular season. And uh, we thank you for tuning in tonight. Now the post-game show, and now it's time for something to smile about, Mr. Shires. All right, yes, I want to smile about a big victory here. I think 45-21. I think that's. I think Coach is going to be happy about that. I think we'll have a great uh, coaches show on Tuesday night at the pizzeria. So that's something to smile about because yep. uh, some of their specialty pizzas, we really enjoy trying those things. The, cool. the buffalo chicken pizza is excellent. Oh. So I really smile thinking about that. We're going to have a nice, a, a good long talk with, with Coach Meek. See, we, it's, those things are very See if he's still smiling by then. I think he's going to be smiling. I think he's going to be smiling at this. I think we fin we finish strong here. That's kind of what he was looking for. So that's something to smile about. Sounds good. All right. Now, moving on for something to smile about. It's time, Mr. Shires, to talk about the Dairy Queen play of the night. Now, the play of the first half, we had a defensive play with a, a huge sack. It was a Cody Andrews coming through, Cody, uh, Cody Atkinson coming through and uh, making a sack on the quarterback in the first half of the game. Where do we stand in the second half? Well, we have a couple of different options. Keep yep. it on the on the headset, Mr. Keaton Wallington. Let's, oh, okay. So you can think about this too. You know, we've got several places. Of course, we have the we have the uh, the little end around uh, play where where uh, Wilburn scored the the, t the touchdown. But I like the the prior touchdown, the one where Cash dropped back and threw the ball forty yards in the air and dropped it in. But, in the double coverage, but Wilbur's able to catch it about kind of toward the back of the end zone. Right over the right shoulder. Yeah, right over the right Beautiful shoulder. Beautiful play. That's, that's going to be my nomination. I think it needs to be better than nomination. Our DQ play of the night. The can, I do a, can I do a special uh, uh, like nomination? Like Not, not like, well, of course. like, yeah. a, like an honorable mention. Sure. If we're talking about percentage of like how well can this play go, uh, we talking like did this go 100% well? It was that punt. That he held on to the ball for a little bit longer, punted it, pinned him down at the four yard line. I think that was like a 97% like potential that, that they got pulled off. And whenever that happens, I think you just have to give a shout All out right, to so special Chris, teams. Chris Wallington is calling for us down on the field. Let's get him turned up there. 
Because I think we got yeah, the go, guys. We need to talk to them. We, we, sir, we have a minute to go to commercial, but it's, it's about time. By the time we get through the commercials, we'll have them all together. All, all right. right. Here's Wendell Family Dental that brings us something to smile about. We'll hear from them. And Wiggins Family Farms will be back. Hey, Blue. Excuse me? Hey, Blue, my mouth was habits. What? My tubes in my mouth. Oh, you have a toothache. Yabies, yabies, a tubes abic. Hmm. Well, you need to take that toothache to Wyndham Family Dental. If it can be done in a big city practice, it can be done at Wyndham Family Dental. Oh, well, thanks very much. Wiggins Farms. You know, they call them the watermelon family. But the product from their farm, from the melons just a baby, all the way through to the harvest, to your table. It's the juiciest, best melons available. Wiggins Farms, hat not included. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Chris Walton down on the field with the coach. Take it away, Chris. All right, fellas. Coach, a good way to go out. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm proud of our guys for the way we played tonight. Um, you know, it's it's hard to win week in and week out. And for us to do the things we needed to tonight, to win the game, very proud of it. Um, I didn't really sense a big letdown. Uh, and that was one of the things you wanted. It was consistency. Yes, sir. Um, thought we started really fast. Uh, weren't running around to the ball great early on defensively. But but uh, but we, we fixed that once we kind of let them hang around a little bit there early. Um, Defensively, started playing really well. Big plays in special teams. Big plays defensively with two interceptions. Um, offense just kept playing well. And so, uh, very proud of our guys tonight and finishing up the, the regular season. Round one, Gilmer, Hallsville. Is that right, right I understand? Yes, next Friday, 7 o'clock. Seven, 7 o'clock. So, we're starting 30 minutes early. That's right, 30 minutes early. That's good. All right. Well, that's great. Hallsville's not that far a drive, and it's a beautiful place. It is. It's going to be a great matchup. Two really good football teams. I think two probably are the better teams in the region. It's unfortunate we have to play in the first round. Yeah. That's part of it. we got to be ready to go compete, ready to go to work uh, Monday and, and, uh, and have a good time while we do it. And what is a Buckeye anyway? I think y'all are a Rough Rider versus a Buckeye. I think we got that. It is like a, it's like a pecan, right? It's a I nut. Mean, I mean, it's a yeah. tree. But, I think we got this. <laughs> From a mascot standpoint, I feel good yeah, about I it. I feel good, me too. <laughs> well, thank you, Coach. We'll send it back up. We'll be back down here to talk to some players in about 10 seconds. Thank you, Chris Wallington. The Coach Talk on KDT Radio is brought all game long by JBA Financial. John Black knows a thing or two about leadership. He was a Rough Rider coach himself in the 1980s. So he and his staff at JBA Financial take pride in providing financial leadership for their clients in center and in Longview. All right, head back down to Chris Watlington for our interviews with our players. Hey, you two, move over. You're in the way of the camera. God. All right, I have the non-senior record setter here to start with. The seniors are taking pictures, and they should. Cody Atkinson, they said you set the record tonight for tackles in the season. They were wrong. You already set that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes, sir, I knew that about – I knew that Monday. I mean, that's awesome. So you just added to it to get today, and – I mean, starting about the second game, we were calling your name all the time. Has this been fun or what? Man, it's been a blast. I've enjoyed every second of it. I mean, couldn't get any better. What about tonight? It's, uh, defensively, I thought you guys pitched a pretty good game. Yeah, we did good. I mean, our D-line really did the thing tonight. And our secondary, they, they improved a lot much this week at practice. And so they did their thing, too. Well, man, thank you a bunch. we got some other record holders to talk to. and got Cash Cross. We'll probably be talking to him next week as a record holder. All right, Lance, come on over here. Now, according to our computations, you're still two receptions short of Marmar Evans for the all-time TD receptions. We'll have to check on that. Yes, but sir. no question, in one season, you just – he got both of them. All right. I mean, isn't that awesome? Yes, sir. I mean, did you even think of such a thing? No, sir. You were playing with Mar Mar. He's so good. You just broke his record. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Yes, sir. The little cost to, to you to score the touchdown, the second touchdown, is that really a pass? Yes, sir. It, how far did it travel in the air? About a yard. About a yard. That's okay. That's okay. That's the 13th touchdown. Man, congratulations. Hope you get a couple more next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's Lance Wilburn. And then over here, this guy, this is a record that that was not talked about because we really don't know 
where it stands. I don't think anybody does. We'll have to go back and look, but I don't know if we keep records on missed extra points. But you told me about week three. I think you came to visit us at the yeah. pizzeria, didn't you? Yes, sir. What did you tell me then? Now I was going to try not to miss a kick, and I didn't miss. And you didn't miss. We, we missed a, a snap, yeah, but that didn't count. Yeah, no, that don't count. Yeah, he didn't actually so, kick it. Yeah, he didn't have to kick, kick it. That's he didn't not, actually kick it. That's right. Never got a chance. Didn't swing his foot. So you come out here and you hit your longest one of the season, right? The forty-one yes, yarder. Yes, sir. Yes, and I it could have been good from a lot longer. Yes, sir. Like forty, maybe fifty. You know. <laughs> I didn't say anything because I didn't want to jinx it. But I was like, dude, I hope he doesn't miss this forty-one yarder. And it wasn't even close. It was. It split it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was a little ugly, but it split the uprights. That didn't look ugly to me. Man, I'm so proud for you. That is just yes, great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank Congratulations, you. ma'am. Three record holders in one interview, which makes me a record holding interviewer. That's right. But there's one more person. Girl, you're you're emotional, aren't you? I'm not okay. <laughs> because because this is the last football game at home with with seniors that you love, right? But you still have another game. But it's not, it's not home. And, and that matters, doesn't it? It does. Especially when I've cheered with these girls since seventh grade, and they're like my sisters. Well, I have good news for you. I have good news for you. Hallsville, where we're going to play Bra. the playoff game, Bra. is purple. Okay, okay, that makes it better. So that it'll be better. like being at home. Yeah. I'm ready. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. Yes, it'll be like being at home. Everything will be fun, you know. Yeah. So. And so, hopefully, we we'll make it farther than one round. Of, of course, play. yeah. The, the, why would we not? If we don't, I'm gonna have some words with the boys. <laughs> okay, and they don't want that. They don't want that. Hey. Will you do me a favor? And you see that down there in purple? Yes. Would, would you read that for me? Yes. The girls and I say thank you to Gaddy's Medical Equipment on her street for bringing you updates about the cheerleaders all season long. When you need help getting better, you trust Gaddy's. And I trust you. Great interview thank before you. the game and yes. afterwards. We'll be right back. What sort of thing do you expect from a good coach like Rick Meeks to prepare you? To make you ready for the game, to make sure that the good times outnumber the bad times, but that when bad times come, you can weather the storm. What do you expect from a good financial planner? Well, much the same thing, so that your family and you get across the finish line on top of the world. That's why JBA Financial sponsors our Coach Talk with Rick Meeks. JBA Financial and Rough Rider Football. Thought you'd seen the last of the Ford Bronco. Well, you were wrong. Ford brought the Bronco back so they could put the S in SUV. Comfort and connectivity for the highway to get you there. And then the power you need for your off-road adventure. Run at the front of the herd. Saddle up a Bronco at Center Motor Company. Gaddy's Medical Supply is your one-stop shop for all your medical supply needs. Uh, Jack Allen, where's my ankle wrap stuff from my sore ankle? Your ankle wrap or your Kinesio wrap? Uh, the old guy wrap. Ah, the ankle wrap. It's in the top bathroom drawer. Okay, thanks. If you are recovering from an illness or an injury, Gaddy's Medical Supply can offer you the support you'll need. Jack Allen? Yeah? Where did I put the raised toilet seat? Check behind the door? Right. From crutches to canes to chairs, Gaddy's Medical is there for you. Behind which door? The hall bathroom, Dad? Okay. Okay, take care of yourself or someone you love with Gaddy's Medical Supply. All right, buddy, welcome back. And there's Chris Wallington walking up the steps. We got you right on the camera. It's kind of right where you want me. Season versus, fellas. If we play Brownsboro 10 times, what's our record? Who are you going to start? Go ahead, Steven. I, I, I'd say. I say we'd be five and five. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you think the Bears are gonna get us five of them? Yes, they're gonna maul us five times. I think I think you're crazy, Shires. I think you're absolutely crazy. What about you, um, Keaton? If we play them five times or ten times for the whole season, I think we'd probably go nine and one. Yeah. Yeah, nine and one. 10 Shires and 0. says five and five. Shires. I think we need to remember that today um, the Rough Riders put their subs in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got to remember that. You got to remember that. What about you, Payne? On oh, any, you already said. On any given Friday, I'm with Keaton, nine and one. Nine and one. I think that's, that's uh, the, the Bears can pull one out every now and then. Okay. 
That is fair. That is fair. And let's get Keaton in here for the final scoreboard. Or have we ever have we done that? We haven't. Yes, sir, we have not. Okay, come on in, Keaton, and, and give us the final scoreboard. If you can borrow Shires's um, headset, we'll we'll get you strapped up. But before I do that, I just a more fun season versus probably would be the current record holders. You know, like Hernandez against. Whoever it was that went, I can't remember his name, I've been trying to rack my brain, that went and kicked for a, for a college and had a very good career. Yeah, Alexis Lopez. Alexis Lopez, isn't that right? He's still playing. Yeah. So, season versus, you know, which kicker's better, Hernandez or Lopez? The the, the guys, the wrecking ball, that, that crew that played the linebacker back in the day, them versus Clint, I mean, uh, Cody Atkinson. Uh, Atkinson. That would that would be fun and belong on that team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm and, just I'm sorry. There, there's, there, there's <laughs> those guys were good. Being a little bit of size. So right? maybe we can talk about that Tuesday night. You know, we can have those conversations. All right, batter's is final it? scoreboard, Mr. Uh, Keaton Wallington. This is my last scoreboard for the year for for you guys. That's so right. That's right. Thanks for having me. We're gonna start with the the district games, the uh, Bullard. Panthers and the Van Vandals. It says they're still playing on my app here. This current score is 28 to 21. I don't know how much I trust that. My app's been going a little crazy. Uh, but that's Bullard ahead. Bullard ahead of wow. the Van Vandals, according to Football Friday. And um, it, it may not mean anything. I, if Rusk, what's the Rusk score? Rusk beat the Canton Eagles okay. 21 to 13. So Bullard's not going to go to the playoffs, despite if they can beat Van. You gonna let me do my scoreboard Sorry, or not? No. I'm, a, I'm going to. Gilmer be quiet Buckeyes now. beat the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates 64 to six. San Augustine Wolves uh, beat the Grapeland Sandys 42 to 28. Um, you want to take a look at this right here? The Timpson Bears, Garrison Bulldogs. Final score 353 to 19. <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> yeah. But Timpson did win the Battle of the Adiac. Uh, Tenaha Tigers beat the Overton Mustangs 35 to 21, wow. and the Shelbyville Dragons fell to the West Sabine Tigers 62 to 34. So that means Timpson and Tenaha are district champs. Shelbyville is in the playoffs despite the loss. Joaquin will not be. Uh, Tenaha and then centers go into the playoffs as well. So that, that's a that's a pretty good roundup. We got one ad to take care of, and then we will round out the, the show. The Wiggins Farms postgame will continue and conclude here shortly. Turn the light on, please. Mm -hmm. The Cornerstone pregame show brought to you in part by Rough Rider Quick Lube and Bob's Pawn Shop. Come check the score of the game while you shop. Shelby Veterinary Associates, your pet is part of your family. And Center Tire Company, it's too important to leave to anyone else. Welcome back to the Wiggins Farms post-game show. Final segment here as we talk about our final thoughts. Counselor, in the extra segment point, what about your final thoughts on this game? I'm just going to be quick. I, I'm looking forward to this week. If, if we can – the good thing about Gilmer, if we can win that football game, mm -hmm. then we may have two games that are easier than that game. Yeah. It's, coming up, so. And it's not unreasonable. If, if, we play, if we were to play them tonight, they would be nine-point favorites. That's probably going to what it's going to be, about a 9- or 10-point um, favorite for Gilmer. But at one point in the season, we would have been picked to beat them. They were, We were trending up, they were trending down. So the, these are apples-to-apples apples games that we're talking about. And you're right, beat them, would, we could go pretty deep. Yep. So let's think about looking at next week, Chris. To give everybody what the deal is. We're playing Gilmer when and where. In him uh, in, in Hallsville, yep. let's you know go to Longview, take a right, or go to Marshall and take a left. Yep. It's about an 75 minute drive, not a long way. Beautiful stadium, Did beautiful we play facility. There not that long ago. I think so. I think so. It's a beautiful place, and and it's purple. And we'll play at seven o'clock next Sunday, round one against a very wait, difficult wait, wait. foe. Next Friday. Did I say Sunday? You did. I meant Friday. And it's against a seven p.m. Seven p.m. instead not of seven thirty. Yep. Against the Gilmer Buckeyes, a okay. team we've never beaten. You know, Matty Dillinger was big on Buckeyes that you carry yes. them in your pocket for good luck. <laughs> uh huh. Kind of a brown looking thing. Yes. Anyway, the Gilmer Buckeyes, 7 o'clock next Friday night. Now, before next Friday night hits, one, 
y'all got to remember that, of course, be careful all hunters tomorrow. Wear yes. orange. Tomorrow's opening day hunting season. And tomorrow night, you move your clocks. Uh, Fall that's, back. That's right. Set them back, what, 30 minutes, an hour, or something like that. Extra hour of sleep. I know that much. How about that? Good yes. deal. All right, folks. We thank you tuning in to the broadcast tonight to the football game. And we want to thank all of our guests for the Wig- in the Wiggins Farms post-game show. Coach Meeks, Caden Dixon, Sydney Newworth, Cash Cross, and Jason Locke on the PA microphone. I want to congratulate our Center Motor Company player of the game. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Mayo. <laughs> we didn't even talk to him because we had record setters. That's right. Yeah. He, right. But he had a great game on defense. All right, so tonight the Center Rough Riders defeat the um, Brownsboro Bears 45-21. And the Riders finished seven and three on the year and four and two in district play, making the third playoff seed in District Eight. Now Tuesday night, you've heard the shy, the counselor talk about it on the radio. You can uh, li- well on the radio you can listen to Don Wall and Rick Meeks at 8 p.m. on KQBB 100.5. You can join Stephen and Chris and Larry Pierce live at the Pizzeria for the Rick Meeks Show, brought to you by Sabine State Bank. And now for Zach Jebson for both Shires, Counselor, and Scarlet, and on the scoreboard for the Watlingtons, Keaton and Chris, this is Rob Payne saying bye for now. Wiggins Farms. You know, they call them the watermelon family. But the product from their farm, from the melons just a baby, all the way through to the harvest, to your table. It's the juiciest, best melons available. Wiggins Farms, hat not included. This has been a presentation of the Rough Rider Broadcast Team, brought to you by Watlington and Shires Productions.